So hey guys, welcome back to my channel. What if Kami fell in love with Naruto and had harem? Movie 1. Naruto awoke in a room of pure white. Looking around he saw that he was alone. He sat up where am I getting up he started to walk around looking for something to see other than white. Doing this for several minutes without finding anything he sat down and wondered where he could possibly be. Lost in his thoughts he never noticed a black dot behind him that was slowly getting larger. He turned around hearing a squeaking. A open door standing it was without a doubt the two most beautiful girl he had ever seen, and both were staring right at him. The two stepped through and the door closed behind them, leaving it with just himself and the two girls. The first girl walked up to him seeming to be the more timed and in his opinion the cuter of them. She was a little shorter than him with dark blue hair and bangs that extended over the corners of her eyes that reminded him of someone he knew. She had chocolate brown eyes that held a sadness that reminded him of when he drops his mask of happiness and looks into the mirror at himself. She had a beautiful pale skin, but, under her left eye, she had a fat line of green. She had on a pure white kimono with short sleeves with a lavender sash around the middle holding it together. He noted that she had a bandage going all the way up her left arm from the wrist to disappearing into her kimono. She stopped in front of him with a sad smile on her face and said in the most shy yet strong voice he had ever heard Hello Naruto-kun. Who are you? He said staring at her like. I am Kami and I am here to help you she said. He looked down and tears started to fall from his eyes. Why do you cry Naruto? I am not worthy to be here in front of you. You who is the good in all things the light of the world and beauty beyond compare. I am a demon something that is evil I deserve to be in hell with Yami. I don't think so and I take offense to saying she is a beauty beyond compare said the other girl. She walked toward him she was the sexier of the two. She had long flowing red hair that looked like blood spun into hair. She was taller than him by about a foot. Her eyes were blue like his own but a lighter blue like the sky on a summer's day. She had slightly tanned skin and was wearing the most revealing cloths. She had on a fishnet shirt that held back what Naruto swore were the biggest assets he ever saw on a girl before. She wore a purple skirt that barely went to mid-thigh, and over it all she wore a blood-red trench coat. Who are you? I am Yami she said with a strange look in her eyes. Then you are here to take me to the place I belong right. The place I deserve to be in. No she said in a sad voice. Why not I am a demon I am evil I deserve it. Smack smack, Naruto held his hands to his cheeks as he stared at the two women who had just struck him. He fell to his knees in front of them and screamed as loud as he could. Why? The two girls turned to one another and looked questions at each other. Why what said Yami? Why am I not being sent to hell? I am evil. Everyone has said it and everyone feels it. I have been treated as an evil being since I can remember. I was hated, beaten, stabbed, burned, and so many other horrible things in my life. Cause of what I am. I hold inside me the greatest evil that ever lived. Pulling off his shirt he showed them the seal on his stomach. The girls looked at it and both were in tears at what they saw on this poor boy. He had scar littering his body, some small others larger, but the worst of all was the brandings on his chest and back. Evil demon was branded on his chest big enough that it covered his whole chest and some of his stomach up to the top of the seal. On his back it said Demon Fox. Yami looked at him as a few tears of red strayed down her cheek and said, the Kyubis chakra should have healed those your skin should be perfect and flawless. How did they do this? Naruto looked up at her and said in a sad voice, they pour salt onto them, and when they burned me and branded me they seared it to the bone, and then poured salt in it, and seared it again. Kami was crying openly now. Holding her arms to her face letting loose tears that were silver. Naruto looked at her and Yami and asked them why do you cry for me a demon a evil like no other. Kami walked up to him and hugged him to her, and started to say I'm sorry, I am so sorry please forgive me, I never thought it would be this bad. He wrapped his arms around her and said, I do not deserve these tears you shed for me. Neither of you should cry for me the two most beautiful and powerful people in existence stand before me as say I do not have to go to hell. Both girls blushed at what he said and smiled. Naruto we have something that we need to tell you, give you and ask of you. I do not understand. Why are you two talking to me and why am I not in hell? I killed myself. I did the worst thing a person could do I ended my own life. You're not dead. You're just in a coma of sorts. Said Yami. But I put enough explosives on me to blow the north gate of Konoha, there is no way I should be alive. I should be pieces of meat no dust in fact. Many of the tags you used were faulty, so the damage was not as bad as it should have been. Said Kami. As we spec the Kaiubi inside you is healing your burns and other injuries sustained by the tags Yami said. Why do you need me and want me to do something for you? We need a champion someone who can fight for us on earth. We will bestow on you gifts from us both to help return the balance on earth. Said Kami. This person has to be pure of heart, strong, and someone who can change people. Said Yami. So I am to be what a saver for humanity. What am I supposed to do? All you need to do is help people and do what is right to help save the world. Said Yami. Will I have to kill people? 
Be will if that person that we deem a threat to the world cannot be swayed. Kami said. So I can try to change the person first, and if not then I have to kill them, he said in an unsure voice. Yes, but only those who are truly a threat to the world and the balance said Kami with a matter-of-fact voice. Okay I think I can do that. Do not worry you will not be alone there will be other to help along the way. Those who will make the journey easier and make your life better. Said Yami with a smile. What do you mean? He said with a confused look on his face. Kami laughed and blushed at the look on his face, while Yami smiled. He seemed to be made of funny looks. You will have friends to help you with your mission, and you will have companions to be by you always. Said Kami. Companions? He said with another confused look. Mates or lovers you know female companions. Said Yami as the boy turned bright red. You mean a girlfriend? He said in an embarrassed tone. No not a girlfriend said Kami. Oh, I meant girlfriends as in more than one or two in fact there will be six Yami said. Six, he screamed. Okay that was loud. Yes six Naruto. You know like one more than five and one less than seven. It is okay Naruto. We believe that it will be good for you to have these six young ladies. It is kind of like a way to set you in balance. What do you mean balance out? I don't understand what you mean. It is to balance out all the wrong that has been done to you. We believe these girls can help you in not only your journey but to give you the two things you have always wanted. A family that loves you and people that you can trust without a doubt. These girls will help to support you through your hard times and to give you what you want people that love you for you no matter what. W who are they going to be? He stuttered out. We decided only to tell you of one of them the one who has loved you the longest she will be your first of many. But if you look at us you will see something in us or how we look that is a characteristic of those girls. We will give you hints of these lovely ladies that will help you find them. Each of them has something they have gone through that is a reflection of what you have gone through. Not to the extent you have but they will know your pain. They will help you to coo with what happened with you and you will help them. Looking at the two he studied them. Taking in the slightest things in the appearance from their eyes to their hair to Yama's huge bust. Both girls were blushing as he examined them to a T. So you are saying that these girls I am to fall in love with are going to be like me in a way. That they will look in some way like you too and that they are to be my lovers and wives. Yes that is what we are saying. Wow. Lucky me. The two girls turned to each other and started to laugh. They were laughing so hard they were crying. Okay now for your gifts. Ifs. You mean there are more. I thought six girls that if I am seeing you two right are the most beautiful of women in the world. What other gifts could I ask for? Yami stood there with a smile on her face and a light blush on her face. She licked her lips in a way that made Naruto shiver. Kami on the other hand had light up like a Christmas bulb and started to poke her index fingers together. Naruto stared at the motion and was hit with a memory of seeing a girl who did that same action every time he was near. He could not remember who it was. Back to the gifts. We have decided to give you one gift each and one together and then we will tell you who your first love is and the clues to the other five. Yami walked up to him and handed him a necklace. Naruto stared at the piece of jewelry it was made of what looked like silver as it gleamed and twinkled. At the bottom it held a green stone with a spiral much like the one he wore on the back of his jacket. In the center of it held a red ruby. This necklace is very special. It has in it a special seal that can allow a being that are sealed out of their cage and give said being a body. The being will be under you control while the necklace is on it. No one other than you can control the being and no one, but you can take the necklace off. She stepped back as Kami stepped forward. In her hand was what looked like a six-inch knife in its sheath he took it looking at the dinky knife. He was confused. All the gifts he could get and he gets an anti-cheese cutter. Unsheath it she said. He grabbed the handle and pulled. There was noise like metal against rock. As the knife came out it transformed. Naruto was in awe of the blade that now was held in his hand. The blade was about three feet long and pure black with a line of red that spiraled from the guard to the tip of the blade. It had a white hilt with a lavender bandage wrapped around the top of it. The guard was clear it looked like it was made of diamond but looked like inside it held red flax like ruby shards. Only one thing came to mind when he looked at that it's beautiful. He then placed the tip of the blade at the sheath and pushed. It made the noise again of metal on rock and slide home in the sheath. It was back to the appearance of a simple knife. It is called justice. It holds many secrets and only you can unsheathe and wield it. It holds many powers which you will have to discover for yourself. It is unbreakable and has a will of its own, treat it well, and it will sever you loyally. Smiling Kami walked back over to Yami and stood next to her. Now for our last gift. We are going to remove all your scars from you and Dot. No thank you. What do you mean no? I would like to keep them. Why? I want them as a reminder of my life. These scars are like my life story written on my body. It is a life of pain yes but it is my life nonetheless. Are you sure that you want to keep them? When you leave here you will have them forever. Yes I am sure. Thank you though. We got to come up with something else to give him. Okay how about a bloodline limit? That sounds like a great idea. 
But what kind should we give him? I think I got it. Really what? We'll give him a Dejutsu. Okay but, what will it do? How about something that can help his weaknesses? What's your weaknesses Naruto? I don't know. I can't break or do Jinjutsu. That sounds good. How about we make it so you can see through all Jinjutsus and be able to cast them with them, but why not give it a little something more to it? How about we give it more bang? We can give it two more abilities we don't want to overpower it. We can make it see in the dark no matter how little light there is. Yes that's a good idea and to see people's elemental affinities. Can you really do all that? Yes close your eyes and be warned this will sting. Closing his eyes Naruto felt two hands cover his eyes one was Kamis and the other Yamis. He felt heat on his eyes, then they started to burn and sting. After several minutes the hand moved away from his face. Opening his eyes he felt a slight vertigo making him feel dizzy for a second. Looking around he noticed things were sharper like the features of the girls. He looked over at Kami to see her holding a mirror out to him. Grabbing the mirror he brought it to his face and saw his eyes and gasped. Staring at his eyes he say the difference. His left eye was white. Whiter than any cloud and in it was a red slit down the middle. His right eye was the exact opposite it was red with a white slit. He stared and then looked over at the two who had given him this gift and laughed. I only have one question. Does it stay like this all the time? No it goes back to your normal blue, but it will be different. How will it be different? Change them back and you will see. Just concentrate on what they normally look like. Naruto closed his eyes and thought about what his eyes looked like. Opening them again he looked into the mirror and saw his blue eyes, but as he looked he noticed there was no pupil or white in his eyes, they were a solid blue. That's a change but it could be worse. Can you two do one thing for me please? I don't see why not. What is it? Can you put three tattoos on me? I guess. Where do you want them? One over left eye, one under my right and one on my right arm. Okay what do you want on them? Under the right one I wanted to say hell in black, above the left heaven in purple and on the right arm a picture of the nine tails. If you could please. Here is the link to the picture of the Kaiubi he wanted. Yami took her hand and placed it under his right eye and after a minute pulled away. Kami stepped up and did the same above his left eye. He looked into the mirror again and saw the tattoos and smiled. The two walked to him for a third time and he held his arm out to them. They grabbed it and the light engulfed he felt pain in the arm and was wonder why this one hurt and the others did not. As they lifted their hands away from it, he saw a beautiful picture of the fox on his arm. Thank you for these. No problem. Okay. Now for your clues to your five unknown loves and the name of the one who you get to know first and has loved you the longest. Saratobi was running to the monument at breakneck speed, trying to get there to see what exactly happened. Coming up on the mountain he noticed a large number of people gathered around something on the ground. Running up to them he yelled at the top of his lungs move out of the way. Anbu set up a 30-foot perimeter around this area. As if coming out of thin air 20 Anbu appeared. Jumping in front of the crowd they started pushing back. After the crowd was about 20 feet away the Hokage and his two Anbu guard walked up to what lay on the ground. The purple air Anbu saw what lay there and turned away she could not bear to see so much meat. Saratobi walked up and cringed. Lying there was what looked like a smoking body. It had no skin you could see the muscle in some places and in others bone black and burnt. Looking at it closely he noticed that it had no clothes at all. Looking over at the purple haired Anbu he said, go to the top of the monument and search for any clues as who this could be. Hi Hokage-sama. She then jumped away. Who would do this to themselves? Said the other Anbu. I do not know but I hope to find out in the next few minutes. Said Sir Toby. Several minutes passed with no sign of the Anbu that left. As Sir Toby looked on at the body he swore he kept seeing things change on it. Like on the bone he saw when he got the it seemed to have disappeared under some muscle that was not there minutes before. If he did not know better he would swear that the body was reforming. Then the purple haired Anbu appeared in front of him holding what could only be clothes. She said in a sad voice, I found these at the top of the mountain my lord. She hand him the clothes and as he saw them in his arms he dropped them. On the ground the clothes fell and he stared and said the only thing that came to mind, Naruto. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Okay. Now for your clues to your five unknown loves and the name of the one who you get to know first and has loved you the longest. Okay I'm ready hit me. He said enthusiastically. Yomi raised her head and whammy she hit him full in the face. Kami looked over at her and was giving her a confused look. Yomi shrugged and said, he did ask for it. Shaking her head Kami walks over to the fallen Naruto and says, okay your first clue is Dango is my favorite food. What kind of clue is that? The kind that will help you find them now shut the hell up or I will hit you again. Okay just don't hit me again. Your second clue is flowers are my favorite pastimes. Okay Dango and flowers. Your third I swim with the ease of a fish. Okay. Your fourth I travel with a demon in misty lands. Hmm. And your final clue I have been with you since the day you were born. 
Okay that one made no sense no one has been with me all my life. Those are your clues remember the men your loves will be easy to spot. Okay we got a dangahalic, a flower power girl, a qua woman, a demon lover, a stalker, and my long loving mystery love sounds like a match is made in heaven oh wait it was. Both girls laughed and Yami said, that sounds about right. Sure does. Okay so can you tell this person who has loved me the longest? Yes we will but, first we want you to try to think of the one girl who has always watched you always been nice to you. Naruto thought as hard as he could. He started seeing flashes of a girl with hair like Kami had and kept pushing her index fingers together and was always staring at him with beautiful lavender eyes. He looked at Kami and said the name of the girl who loved him always, Hinata. They smiled at him and nodded. He started to cry harder than he has in his whole life, worse than any beating or any sadness and said, I do not deserve her. She has loved me for so long and I never noticed I just blow past her to Sakura. How can she love me when all I have done is ignore her? The funny thing about love is that no matter the pain you go forward in it. She will still want you and will do anything to have you. She will be your love among your loves. She will need your help though. How? I will do anything to help her please. She is strong in many ways. She needs you to be her confidence to help her believe she can do anything that is why she is perfect for you. She will help you in your greatest time of need in ways you cannot possible imagine. I will do anything to help her. Thank you both so much for everything but most of all for helping me see her. He walked up to them and hugged Kami who blushed and turned bright red and kissed her on the cheek before pulling back. Then went to Yami as he hugged her he leaned in to kiss her cheek and meet something softer as he looked he saw he was kissing Yami full on the mouth. Opening his mouth to gasp he found that that was a bad mistake as Yami slid her tongue into his mouth. Pulling away Naruto blushed like crazy. What was that for? What do you expect I have the treats of the more forceful of the women that will be his it is in my nature. Okay whatever. We are going to send you back Naruto, but before we do that there is some things we need to tell you. Okay shoot. Pulling out a gun Yami aimed. Before she could pull the trigger Kami grabbed the gun and said, would you stop taking him in the literal sense please. Naruto looked like he was going to wet himself as he looked at Yami who just smiled and waved at him. The first thing we need to tell you is that when you get back to your body you are going to hurt like crazy. Kinda figured that one out but thanks for the warning. Secondly when you meet and know for a fact that the woman you have found is one of your loves you will have to bite them. What do you mean bite them? I mean sink your teeth into their flesh around the neck and push chakra into it, this will leave a mark. Well I am biting someone so it should leave a mark. No, it will leave a tattoo like on them something of their choosing. They will have to bite you too it will leave their mark on you showing that they are yours. This transaction will give them a trait of yours and also raise their chakra reserves as well. It will also give you a connection to them one that will help you find them no matter what and know when they are in trouble. Okay anything else? Yes a warning of sorts. Beware Orochimaru he is the a snake in the grass a evil snake in the grass, and beware Akatsuki the group is after you and your fellow Jinchuriki, they are some of the strongest of fighter in the world, you will have to grow very strong to defeat them. These people you must kill most are unchangeable and must be done with. I understand. But then it is time for you to go back, and when you do go and you can talk and are well tell your Hokage that it is time for you to know the truth. He will understand. The door appeared behind the two again and it opened. He looked at them as they started to go through and said, will I ever see you again? Not for a long time we hope. We will be watching so be good and when you have the kids name them after us. As the door closed he could hear laughing. Kids. Then the white room started to fade to black and he felt pain all over his body and then he opened his eyes. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Oh my god Naruto. We need to get him to the hospital now. Said Sirotobi. The purple haired Anbu picked him up and started racing to the hospital. As she was running she looked down and came in contact with solid blue eyes. She stared into them finding that she was losing herself. She quickly snapped out of it and looked over at the Hokage and said, Hess awake. Dear God how can he be alive let alone awake? The Hokage looked at Naruto and said in a clear voice we need to get him there now. Running faster than they thought possible they jumped and made it to the hospital building. Going inside the Hokage called for a gurney. When one came around the corner the Abu placed him on it and stepped away as it was being pushed out of sight. Turning around to the Hokage she waited for orders. He looked at them and said, dismissed. The other Anbu jumped away when the purple-haired one stayed and asked the Hokage, as the mask worn by the Anbu came off and said, will he be okay? I do not know Anko I do not know. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Elsewhere in Kanoha a girl with dark blue hair was laying down to sleep for the night. As she lay there she thought of the boy she loved. With his unique blonde hair and blue eyes, those whisker marks are his cheeks that she would die to stroke just once, and the best part of all his personality to go for is goal and never give up. 
to her there was no other person she would rather be with and had decided that if she could never have him then she would rather die alone. As she drifted off to sleep thinking of her fair-haired love, she opened her eyes to see a room that was not her own. It was pure white with no other color in sight. She thought it might be illusion, so she activated her by Akigan, but saw no nothing but white. As she deactivated her eyes and turned around she saw a door open and from the door came her Naruto. She was thinking it must be a dream like all her other ones she was trying to figure out if it was one of the one that showed her life with him or one of the dirty ones that made her wake up soaked in wet between her legs. She was hopping for the ladder. As she wondered which it would be Naruto spoke, hello Hinata. HH hello and Naruto-kun. I am not your Naruto-kun Hinata I just look like him. Then who are you and why do you look like my Naruto-kun? Your Naruto-kun huh? I am Kami. She blushed at what she said about Naruto and looked at the great being before her in awe. Why you are K Kami? Yes, what would you have of me your servant Kami-sama? What if I told you that I planned on Naruto dying in the next few minute and I was going to send him to hell? Well a straight and stern face she said, I would ask you to do the same to me. Really you would do this for a demon? But the confused look she asked, what do you mean demon? He is no demon he is sweet and caring and has never hurt anyone. Ami smiled and said, inside of Naruto held by a seal from the great fourth Hokage is the nine-tailed demon Kaiubi. It was not killed like you were told but resides in him. What do you think of your Naruto-kun now? She looked at Kum and said, I do not care. He is my one and only. I would do anything on earth for him to be with me demon or not. Smiling Kami said in a happy voice, you will have him Hinata he will be with you but you will have to deal with some things if you want to be with him you will have to dot. I will do it she said happy as can be. I have not told you what you will have to go through to have him. It does not matter as long as I am with him. You will have to share with other women some older than you. Five other have been chosen for him. Would you still go to him? Yes. As long as I get him as well I will go to him. Then so be it. When you awake get ready to leave 30 minute after you awaken a person will show up to take you to the hospital there you will have to save your love. What do you mean save what happened to Naruto-kun? You will see when you get there but listen well when you get to the room he is in ask the Hokage and everyone else to leave. When they go you must give him this. Holding up a ball of blue light he handed it to her. You must eat it now. She looked at him confused and asked, how do I give it to him if I eat it? When you enter the room and everyone has left you must bite him on the neck this will transfer it to him. In return he will bite you this will heal him and also bind you two together. So what will this do to me? It will make you Naruto's you will belong to him and he will be with you and love you. Needing no more stimulus she grabbed the orb and ate it. She looked at him and felt something weird happen in her mouth. She felt around with her tongue and noticed her canines were much longer than they were before looking at Kami for a reason he said easier to bite with. You must know that after he bites you he will push chakra into you and some things will change on you. Like what? You will get a physical trait from him and your chakra capacity way above it is now and you will want to be near him all the time. Okay sounds interesting dot. One thing before I send you back. Your father will be against this whole thing he will not want you to go with him so tell him this okay. That Naruto has a new bloodline limit, one that can strengthen the Byakugan so much that it could fair surpass the Sharingan. Tell him that and Naruto will be yours. To be with him I will do it. Okay. You must go now. He will need you. As the room faded to black Hinata woke. Looking around she got up and showered getting ready to go. Sitting on her bed after dressing she waited when a knock was heard. Her father entered. Hinata there is a Anbu outside who say you need to go to the hospital for some reason. She sprang up and ran outside to the Anbu. She got outside and found Anbu with purple hair sitting there waiting. I am ready take me to him. Infused the Anbu said, how did you know it was someone needing help? Don't have time let's go please. Grabbing onto the girl's arm and disappeared in a vortex of leaves. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X was watching as the doctors were walking around the boy checking stats and vitals. It was looking like he was not going to survive, but something weird had happening 10 minutes prior that made the old Hokage believe that he would survive. Flashback, Sarutobi walked into the room and said in a clear voice states report. A man in a doctor uniform walked to the Hokage and said, we are doing all we can, but still he is fading. We can keep trying but it looks like he is going to die. The old man's shoulders slumped and he said, just do what you can. Hi Hokage-sama. And out of nowhere a scream was heard Hinata dot. The old man looked at Naruto to see him thrashing about screaming for the lavender-eyed girl. Hinata. 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 The old man looked at Anko and said, bring her to me now and say nothing of what is happening. Hi as she disappeared. He turned back to the still screaming boy and said, she is coming Naruto calm down. But still he screamed. Then flashback, it had been 10 minutes and still he screamed her name just as loud if not louder than before. Looking at the screaming boy he thought to himself what is so important that you need her here now. 
All of a sudden Anko and Hinata appeared out of thin hair in the room. Looking around and heard someone screaming her name she looked over to the person making the noise and say a burned up looking person. She ran to him as he was still screaming her name and said in a soothing voice, I am here calm down Naruto I am here it will be okay. At those words he calmed down. Saratobi was in awe at the calming effect she had on him. She looked over at the Hokage and said in a calm voice I can heal him. What do you mean? I can make him better but I need you all to leave it's I secret so please go. He looked at her and said. We cannot go I am sorry. If you do not he will die and oh long after I will as well. What do you mean? I am saying that if he dies I will kill myself I swear at Hokage Sama. And the last thing you will ever hear from me is my hate of you for letting my beloved die. I will not hurt him I love him no arm will befall either of us so I beg you as she dropped to her knees let me save my love. He stared at her eyes and knew she meant every word of what she said. Fine you have 10 minutes. Ordering all the people to leave the Hokage looked back at them and Hinata said to him. Can you put a seal on the door so no one can hear him this is really going to be loud. Okay dot. After a minute she felt the seal go up and she looked at his eyes that were now a solid blue and said to him in courage she had never had before hello my love. He looked at her with a look of pain and said, I am sorry I never noticed. She looked at him and smiled it is okay. The past is that the past from now on we will have one another. Now turn your head. He looked at her and did as he was asked. She said to him this might hurt that is why I asked for the seal. He nodded slightly. She went to his right side of his neck and said softly with this we are together always. She then bite him hard breaking the skin. She felt the power go through her and push out her mouth into Naruto's neck. He moaned and grabbed Hinata and pulled her to him. He said to her in a voice that sent chills up her back and tugged things in her chest and between her legs and said, my love no my mate. And bite her on her neck. Hinata was in bliss she felt herself tighten up and then release. It did it over and over again. She knew what heaven was like she was screaming his name as he pants started to soak to the knee. He pulled away and held her as she looked up into his eyes she saw red and white. She smiled at him and said, I love you no matter what. She then stood up and looked down at her pants and flush red. Naruto looked down and saw how soaked she was and smiled. She blushed harder. He hand her his jacket and said, tie it around your waist. She did as he asked. She then looked at him. He was whole again if no more so. His skin on his arms were without a burn and his face was also. She saw his eyes and just smile at them. She traced the beautiful tattoos above and below his eyes. She then saw the one on his arms and as she touched it, it glowed and also looked like its tails were moving. She looked at his hair and noticed a change in it. It had orange tips and was wilder. She looked at his face again and saw his whisker marks that were now more defined and she reached out and struck them. He started to purr into her hand and she smiled. As he moved into her hand she say something on his neck. She leaned in and saw what looked like a tattoo of the leaf symbol in lavender. She touched and when she did Naruto grabbed her hand and growled. He looked down at his midsection and looked up at Hinata. She looked down to see that Naruto was erect painfully so. He looked at her and said, please do not touch unless you are willing to quench the hunger of it. She nodded while still looking at it. Naruto reached up and touched where he bite her and when he touched her skin there she grow hot and she looked at him like her was the ice to cool her throbbing body down. She jumped on him and started to rub herself against his swollen manhood. Naruto groaned but stopped her. He looked at her and said, you should look at yourself in a mirror before someone comes in. She looked at him confused and got up and looked at herself in a mirror. She gasped. She saw now that she had orange tipped hair, her eyes were slits and where Naruto bit her, there was a leaf symbol in lavender. She stared at the changes and then smiled. I am now closer to you my love. Yes but, you need to put a jinjutsu on your appearance till we are together always. Hold on let me try something. Dottie looked at her and channeled chakra in his eyes and imagined what she looked like before. When she looked at herself again she saw she was back to normal or what used to be normal. She looked at him and said, ready for company? Sure. She went to the door and let them in saying it was okay now. They came in and gasped to see Naruto looking good if not better than before. The Hokage looked at them and said, okay what happened? I healed him like I said. I see that but what did you do and why is he changed like his eyes being solid blue and the orange in his hair? It must have had side effects. This is my first time doing it so I had no idea what exactly would happen. So you did a technique that you have no idea what would happen to the person it was done on. Yup that sums it up about right. What would have happened if he had died? He wouldn't have the technique always works that is what I was told. Who taught it to you? Someone out of village and I can only use it once and that was my once. Okay. So how did you know Naruto was hurt? I just had a feeling. A feeling? Yeah something told me that Naruto was hurt and that I was needed. And that sounds interesting. What is your relationship with Naruto? If I am asked. He is my one and only. I told you that when I asked you to leave. I remember. What about the tattoos? Hess had those. Those are some beautiful tattoos Naruto where did you get them if I may ask? 
I did them myself with the help of Hinata-chan. Really? Yes. So now on to the reason we are all here. Why did you do it Naruto what made you want to end your life? I cracked under the pressure of it all. Knowing of what I have inside me and the years of hurt and pain I want to end it. Naruto said in a sad voice. Hinata was in tears hearing her love was so hurt. If only I had not been afraid to come out and tell him maybe I could have saved him the pain. Naruto grabbed Hinata's hand and looked at the Hokage. I had no idea that I was loved all along and that there was someone to save me. He looked at her now she has saved me physically, emotionally and mentally. He smiled and she smiled back. I was weak but now I will never weaken again. That is good to know. Now get some rest. I will be back in the morning to check on you. Okay Oji-san. See you in the morning. As the Hokage left Naruto looked at Hinata and smiled widely. She sat next to him and waited for the doctors to leave. When the last one left she looked at him and said, what now? He smiled I have a plan. Okay but, wait Kami talked to me and told me everything. Like how you have a dojutsu, the Kaiubi and how you will have other mates, and I don't care as long as I am with you. He smiled at her. Your father will never let me have you. He will make so I can never be with you and never see you. He said in a sad face tears coming down his whisker marked cheeks. She wiped them away and said, do not fret my love Kami has told me a way for us to be together. He smiled at her really. Yes. He says that all I have to do is tell him you have a new dojutsu and that if we were to have children that it would increase the Byakugan to far surpass the Sharingan. He said that my father would do it no second thoughts. That sounds great. What about the dojutsu what will we tell the Hokage? Tell him that it was a side effect of the jutsu. Wow that sounds perfect. I know she said with a knowing smile. Hinata go to your father and talk to him okay the Jinjutsu will last for a few days, but I do not want to wait that long to be with you. She smiled and said, okay but rest while I am gone when I come here tomorrow I will bring my father. Wait just tell him that I would like to see him and that I know of a way to make the Byakugan the strongest Dujutsu ever okay. Okay goodbye my love. Bye. He said. As she left he stared after her and then slowly drifted off to sleep. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Naruto awoke in a strange drain and looked around. He say a few different cutoffs to it but then saw one that was bigger than the other and he heard a voice call out to him. Come to me. Naruto being the curious critter that he was followed the voice. He walked through water that ranged from the bottom of his feet to his neck. He followed it till he came to an island in front of what looked like a gold jail cell. On the cell between the two cell doors was a piece of paper on it said seal. It looked like it was holding the door closed. He walked to it and was almost to the bars when two huge red eyes opened looked at him. He stood there and stared at them without flinching. Why do you not fear me? Why should I be? Because I am the fox that has destroyed millions on a whim, whole countries have been destroyed by me, and you stand here without even a tremble. I have ruined your life yet you do not scream of your hate for me. Yet why do you not yell and scream? First you are sealed I am in no harm, and secondly I want to know your reason for coming to the village before I jump to screaming. You are rational for a human. I will tell you why. Naruto sat down waiting for story time to start. I was off alone gathering food for my mate, and I I had finished and was heading back when I saw smoke coming from our lair. I hurried as fast as I could. I came to it and there was a fire going inside I thought it was just my mate that made a fire to cook our food. As I walked and I saw him laying on the ground burning. Naruto could hear the sorrow in the fox's voice. He felt bad for it. I looked around in my fury to see if I could find out who did it. I found a leaf headband laying in a corner. I smelled it and it smelt of snake so strong it made me sneeze. So I headed to leaf to kill the snake man and to hurt and kill as many people as I could. I wanted this village to suffer like I suffered. So I came and every leaf ninja that came at me man, woman, and child I killed. I searched for the snake man but could not find him. Then a man came to me on top of the toad Gamabunta and asked me why I was doing it. I told him of my mate and of the snake he told me of a traitor to their village who looked like a snake and even held the contract to the snakes. His name was Arachimaru. The man then looked at me and told me he was sorry. He then started moving his hands and a few seconds later I was in terrible pain I looked up to see the Shinigami. He ripped my soul from me and placed it in you. I awoke in you in the cell and have been since that day. Naruto looked up at the giant foxes and said only one thing I am sorry. The Kaiubi looked down at this boy in awe. Why do you say you are sorry? I have only caused you been since the day you were born. Naruto felt a memory come on at those words. Flashback and your final clue I have been with you since the day you were born. Okay that one made no sense no one has been with me all my life. Those are your clues remember them and your loves will be easy to spot. Then flashback may I ask you some questions? Yes. Anything you like. What is your sex? Female. Okay that's a shock. Next what is your goal now? To kill Orochimaru and to find a new mate. 
what would you do if I said I could get you out the cage in me, but you would have to leave seven tails of chakra behind for me. Anything. I would leave them for that chance. Do you have a human form? Yes. Will you please change into it now? Sure. As she said it she started to shrink. Smaller and smaller she became till she was about a foot taller than himself. He stared at her and knew without a doubt in his mind she was his mate. She had long red hair just like Yami had in his dream. She had a huge bust and long luscious legs that disappeared into a short red skirt. The shirt she had on was barely containing the monster melon she had. He looked at her and kept peering around her and looking at her head. She gave him a confused look before asking her question. What are you looking for? Your tails and ears. He said in a matter-of-fact voice. She smiled and turned around and pulled her shirt up in the back. On her back she had nine beautiful tattoos of tails. As he looked at them they seemed to move in a hypnotic motion. She dropped the shirt and looked at him and then touched her ears on the side of her face and said, these are my ears silly boy. Naruto blushed. She smiled and said, anything else you want to know? No but, I do have a deal for you. Would you like to hear it? Okay. I have a gift from Yami that is a seal but it can give you a body and get you out of me. There is a side effect though you will have to do as I say when I say something for you to do it is like a collar. I will not use it unless you do something bad or the thing is of great importance, I swear that you now. I accept. Wait there is more. I have two conditions. One is that you please leave seven tails behind for me. Okay easy enough. And two you must become my mate. I will be looked at him for a second. She just stared at him. He was strong she knew that. Brave, courageous, and funny as well. She knew he would treat her like a gift from Kami. He looked good too so it would not be so hard. She smiled at him and said, agreed Naruto-sama. You will have to share me with five other girls. I do not care. Then let's seal the deal. He walked to the cage and slipped through the bars. He walked up to her and said, I must mark you will you please turn your head to the right. You will have to bite me as well to seal the mating. She turned her head and walked up to her and grabbed the back of her head and pulled her toward him she growled and moaned at the same time. He bent her down and licked her neck and she moaned louder. He then sank his teeth into her. Ayubi was in a whirlwind of feeling. She felt more turn on than she had in all the thousands of years of life more than even with her old mate. She moaned and groaned from release after release. He let go and the second he did she grabbed him and latched onto him. She bit him hard and he just moaned. After a few minutes she pulled back. Looking at him she saw his neck glow then stop. On his neck now was a collar-like tattoo it was red. She looked closer to see that it was nine tails laced together and she noticed one tail reached out and touched a lavender leaf symbol on his right side of his neck. He looked at her and noticed a change in her hair she had blonde streaks in it now. He looked at her and said, here put this on, but you can never take it off. He handed her the necklace and she put it on. It glowed and nothing happened. He walked out of the cage, grabbed the seal on the front of the cage and pulled it off. The doors opened and she stepped out when she crossed the threshold of the cell and then Naruto felt a burning on his back. He turned around and pulled up his shirt. Kaiubi walked up to him and pushed her hands on her back and then played with it. You have seven orange tails on your back Naruto-sama. Cool that's neat. Okay it is time to go. Concentrating on waking up he felt himself leave the sewer and woke up in the real world. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Looking around he saw that he was not alone in the room or for that matter in his bed. There was a lump by his feet moving up towards him. He lifted the lump to see Kaiubi kissing his thigh and moving up to bigger and more sensitive things. Stop please and come here. She looked up at him and then continued what she was doing. Stop now and come here. As if on command the necklace glowed and she stopped and went up to him. I am sorry for using the necklace, but we have no time for fun right now. With a disappointed face she bowed her head and said, yes Naruto-sama. He reached out and took her chin. I know that you want to play but we have things to do okay, I promise that later when this is over we can play. Okay. Smiling she nods and says I cannot wait to have you Naruto-sama. Okay now the business. I want you to go to my apartment and wait for me okay. I will be there by tonight okay. Yes Naruto-sama I will wait like a good mate should. He reached down and kissed her on top of her head. Good now go company is coming and you should not be here. Hi as she disappear into a swirl of flame. As if on cue the door slid open and in stepped Hinata and her father Hiyashi Hayuga. Hinata smiled a brief smile at me and the turn to her father father, this is Naruto and Naruto, this is my father Hiyashi Hayuga. I know who the boy is. What did you want to talk to me for boy? Every time Hiyashi said boy it sounded like he wanted to say demon. Oh great lord Hayuga I have asked you to come here for two reasons one to ask you a few questions and two to ask something of you. Why should I answer your questions boy you mean nothing to me and no to anything you ask me for. He turned to leave when Naruto said, what if I could increase the strength of the eyes of the Hayuga to the point that even the mighty Sharingan is but dwarfed by it. 
The Ashy turned to the boy and looked at him with a calculating stare. You know of a way. Yes I do but it will cost you something truly precise to your clan for it. I think it is well worth it. What is it boy? Tell me. I will give you anything to make my clan be stronger than those copiers. I want to marry your daughter. Your heir to the clan. If you write up agreement saying that I can marry your daughter Hinata, I swear that your clan will gain this power. You want Hinata. Why she is weak and too frail. Why not Hinabi? Cause I want Hinata and only her you give her to me and I will tell you the secret. The Ashi pulled out a scroll and started to write. When he was done he handed the scroll to Naruto and he read it. He smiled and said in a happy voice sounds good. He signed the agreement and handed it to Hiashi who signed it as well and gave it back. Now tell me the secret. The deal is done and I want to know. You have made the first step to it now. I have in me now a new dojutsu. When me and Hinata have children it will fuse in them creating a new stronger dojutsu with the properties of both ours. You lied to me boy you have no dojutsu. The deal is invalid. Come Hinata we are leaving this scum. As he turned around he saw Naruto standing there. Hiashi looked at him and activated his eyes and said, move or I shall move you. Naruto moved and Hiashi walked to the door. He reached for it to notice there was no doorknob. He searched around and found he was in a white room surrounded by fire. He placed his fingers together and shouted, Kai. What happened? He heard a voice come from all around him it was the sound of the demon. Not even your eyes can see through it. This is the power of my dojutsu. I will deactivate it now. As he said it the room turned back into the hospital room. He was staring at the boy's eyes. They had changed his left was white with a red slit in it while his right was the exact opposite. What else can it do? It can tell me your elements and see perfectly in the dark, no matter if there is light or not. I know you have two elements water is your first and earth your second. Imagine the Iakugan with these powers added on to it. Your clan would be the strongest in Konoha history. She is your to do with as you see fit. He said as he turned around and walked out the room. I'm yours now Naruto-sama. Now and forever. Smiling she walked up to him swaying her hips just ever so slightly. He only had eyes for her. Staring as she moved closer he put his hand out and grabbed hers, he brought a close and said, I have never kissed a girl before and I want you to be my first in this and in all things. I can't wait. She said as her lips grow closer to his. He pushed up as their lips touched and he tasted her. He knew what heaven was as he deepened the kiss. He pulled away from her and when he did have felt tears run down his face. Why are you crying my love? This is what happiness is. She then kissed him again and knew things could only get better. So what now? said Hinata in a happy a glowing smile. I have to show you something and tell you a few things. Which do you want first? Is it good or bad sight to see? Which is more important? The sight is bad. If I was going to say which one's more important I would say the info. Then the news please. I found one of my mate today when you were gone. He said in a careful voice. She looked at him for a minute. Okay. Is that all? She said in a calculating voice. No. She is at my place and waiting for me to come home. The temp in the room felt like it had dropped 20 degrees. She looked unfazed by the news, but it felt different. Who is she? You know how inside me is the Kai Ubi. Well um yesterday after you left I fell asleep. He told her the whole story from going to the sower to why the Kai Ubi attacked to even the deal he made. The whole time she listened with no emotion on her face. When he was finished she sat by him and looked at her hands. I want to meet her. Okay we can go together when I leave here. No I want to talk to her alone first. Okay if you promise one thing that you will not hurt her and tell her that Naruto-sama says no fighting. Please do this for me. Okay for you I will promise to you. Now I need to show you something I do not want you to freak out if you saw it out of the blue one day. Getting off the bed he stood in front of her. Slowly he started to remove his gown. What could be bad about? As she said this the gown slipped from his body. He stood in front of her in only his boxers. Her eyes went wide as she looked at the love of her life's body. She saw the scars along his body but what made her die inside were the words the ones branded on him. She walked to him stretched her hand out and touched them. She could feel that they were shallower than the skin around and much rougher. He turned around and should her the one on his back demon fox it said. How? She said in a sob voice. How what? How did you live with this? Through the pain. The hate. The suffering. I do not know. I felt like I just had to like there was a mission that I had to fulfill in life. She grabbed him and pulled him into a bone shattering hug. I will make it better. I will make you feel loved and wanted no matter what. He smiled I know you will. After a few minutes he let her go and smiled again. The Hokage will be here soon. Go to my apartment and talk to her okay. Okay. She kissed him and walked to the door. I will see you in a few hours okay. Remember play nice with her. I my fox. I Hinata. 
X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Naruto and Hokage. Naruto put his gown back on and climbed into his bed. He waited for the Hokage and thought about everything that had happened and what was to happen soon. He was pulled from his thoughts when he heard a door shut. Looking up he saw the Hokage standing there looking at him. Smiling at the old Hokage he said, yo old man what's up? Smiling the Hokage looked at him. So how are you feeling Naruto? I am okay but there has been some changes. What kind of changes? Naruto smiled at him nothing bad just some eye changes and life changes. I see your eyes are different it is not that big a deal. And what kind of life changes? Well let me show you the other eye change and then I will tell you about the life changes. Okay. Naruto waved the Hokage over and pointed at his eye. As the Hokage got close he saw the change. His eyes were different they were red and white and had slits in them. What is it? I think it is a new Jutsu. Really? What can it do? It can cast amazingly strong Jinjutsus and I can see through them as well it can see in the dark, no matter how dark and little light, and also it can tell me the elements people are affiliated to. Well that is useful. Okay so what is this life change you are talking about? First read this scroll. He throw the scroll he got from Hiashi to the old man. After several minutes of reading and rereading the scroll he looked up to Naruto. So Hiashi gave you his daughter just for the chance of making the Byakugan stronger. So what you going to do to her? That's a silly question. I plan to marry her. He said with a smile. Really? Of course. That is not the problem though. What is then? I am planning to marry five others also, but I need to tell you who the next one I found is. Why five others? Pause with a dojutsu a new one at that the council will want me to have others. So I choose six altogether Hinata being the first and the other one I have as number two. Knowing this was true the Hokage nodded. Who is she? Well she has no real name, but I can tell you what she is. Being confused he asked the only question he could. Okay. What is she? Do not freak out. Just hear me out please before you go ape shit crazy okay? Wonder what could make him go ape shit crazy the third Hokage nodded. She is the Kaiubi. The panicked and what Naruto could only guess was a ape shit crazy look came across the old man's face. Wait hear me out first. Let me tell you the story okay. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Hinata and Kaiubi. Hinata walked through the village on her way to Naruto's. She knew the way by heart, so it was okay for her to think off. She was wondering what she was going to say when she got to Naruto's. How was she to stand up to a creature of such strength and power? She had reached Naruto's and was standing at his door. She knocked hesitantly and waited for the door to open. Nothing happened so she knocked again. Still nothing happened so she tried the door and it opened. She walked in and looked around and saw no one. She walked around to everywhere in the house with no sign of life. She then walked into Naruto's bedroom and gasped. There on his bed was a naked redhead woman. Are you Kaiubi? The woman stretched yes. Who were you? I am Hinata and I have a message from Naruto. From Naruto-sama what is it? But you are not to fight with me. Okay. Sounds easy enough. I must talk to you about Naruto. What about Naruto-sama? First why do you call him Naruto-sama? I am under his control in a sense and he is my mate. Okay. Sounds fair. I need to tell you that he is my mate too. So I figured the mark on your neck shows it like the one on mine. She pointed at the tattoo-like necklace under the necklace Naruto said he had given her, that is a seal for him to control her and keep her in line. Hinata looked confused how can you see the mark I have a strong Jinjutsu over it. I am a fox. I am the queen of illusions. So I can see through them naturally. Okay. Why are you wondering about being his mate? I just want to know why you choose to be his mate and what you think of this all. I choose him for many reasons. I think this is okay as long as I get him as well I do not care who I share him with. Please tell me your reasons I cannot let just anyone be with him. He is my world and if you hurt him I do not care how strong you are, I will kill you in the most painful way I can. The Kaiubi red eyes looked at Hanada's lavender white one and she knew this girl would sacrifice everything to have her goal accomplished. How long have you loved Naruto-sama? Since the day he ran into me and my mother on a street when I was three. He hit me while running away from a crowd of people. He stopped while still covered in blood to help me up to make sure I was okay. He told me he was sorry and told my mother that he was sorry for running into me. Why did you fall in love with him? He was so strong even with blood covering him he stopped to help me and to say he was sorry. He was so kind to me and I thought he was just breathtaking to look at. She said this with a dreamy look in her eyes. Sounds fun. Would you like to hear my reasons or stay daydreaming? She snapped out of it. I would love to hear them. I have many reasons to have accepted to be his mate. He promised me revenge is one of the main ones. He is strong and that is what I want in a mate. Is that all? Do you not love him and want him to be happy? Those are my biggest reasons I watched him from inside. 
Tears of scarlet were rolling down her cheeks. Did he show you the brands and the scars? Yes. You're so lucky. I saw it happen to him and could do nothing. He went through all this for a village who was supposed to see him as a hero. What did they do? They spit on their hookage's dying wish. When they first branded him on his chest I cried. When they did the other on his back I cried harder so hard that blood came out. From then on I told myself for penance for the pain I caused him that water was not good enough from now on, I would cry only blood and have ever since. Her eyes flashed to such a dark red that it was almost black. If he asked it of me I would kill everyone in this village and burn it to the ground. I would lay them at his feet. I choice to agree to make up for the pain I have caused him, and because in my thousands of years of life he is the first thing I have ever loved. I understand. Then we have no problem. Would you like me to take that jinjutsu off you? Yes please. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Naruto and Hokage. So that's the story old man dot. Okay. So you are in control of her and anything you say she does. She is also going to be one of your wives. She also came here all those years ago to kill Orochimaru to avenge her mate which you are now her new one. Yes to all. Listen you cannot tell the council they will try to get me to use her as a weapon and I cannot do that. Just say she is a missing nin from another land that was betrothed to me at birth. I will ask her name tonight and give it to you. Just do this for me please. Okay. I will do this for you Naruto, but I need you to promise that she will not go on a rampage. I swear. Then no problem. So what now? Tomorrow you go and meet your team like you always do. I need to be switched to another team Oji-san. Why is that Naruto? Bakashi sensei teaches me nothing he only teaches Sasuke. He treats me like trash like I will never be anything compared to his Sasuke. Sasuke only thinks of himself not of the team and is always bitching about power while Sakura is his faithful bitch. She hurts me and our sensei does nothing but watch. Is this true? Yes. I am learning nothing. For someone who complains about leaving a teammate behind as a being trash offense, he does it to me and Sakura a lot. I see. I will do something about it tomorrow. You will get a new team and sensei. Thank you Oji-san. When you get out what are you going to do? Go home to my loves and talk and try not to get killed. The Hokage laughed. Sounds like a mission in itself. It will be. When you going to marry them? When I find my others. Why wait? I only want one wedding it is too much to have six. Sounds fair enough. So what now? I am going home to my ladies. Getting his clothes on and putting his knife in his pocket he looked at the old man. I need to go to make sure they did not kill each other and that everything is okay. Then I won't hold you up. Bye Naruto. I will see you in my office at 12. As the old man left Naruto thought about what he might have to deal with when he got back home. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Naruto was walking home looking as happy as could be. He knew when he got home he would have two beautiful women waiting and in love with him. He was worried that he would come home and be viciously raped till he died or was out of fluids. As he walked he saw the looks he was getting from the villagers he was passing. Looking at some full on in the face as the scowled and snickered he smiled. He made it to his house and knocked on the door. There was a scuffling nose and the door opened. Hello, Naruto-sama. Naruto looked at her and smiled till he looked down. She was naked. Pushing her inside with a nose bleeding like a river. Why are you naked? I have no clothes Naruto-sama. Okay we will go get you some. For now go put some of mine on please. Yes, Naruto-sama. She walked into his room as Hinata walked out. Hello my love what are we going to do? Well let me ask you how did it go? We have an understanding and are growing to like each other. Sighing in relief thank god I thought you two were going to kill each other. I told you I would not. We have to go get Kaiubi clothes and maybe me some new clothes and if you want you can too. Okay. Sounds like a fun day. When she is done getting ready we can go. They sat making small talk while waiting for Kaiubi to finish getting dressed. The Jinjutsu I put on you is off. What happened? Kaiubi took it off for me. How? She says as a fox she can do it. I'm ready. Coming out to be seen by the two. She was wearing a black shirt that barely contained her goodies. It was a mid-drift on her. She wore his orange pants that looked skin tight and his jacket tied around her waist. Okay I guess that will do for now. He said with a trickle of blood coming down his nose. Let's go shall we? Let's. Said both girls at the same time. Walking around the village they came to a shop that looked interesting. Walking up to it they walked inside. The bell ringed above the door. Welcome said a young girl with buns on the side of her head. What kind of store is this? The girl at the counter looked up it's a ninja store. I never knew there was a store like this. How long you been here? Always. As long as I have been here. Do you have clothes here? We have clothes, weapons, scrolls, and we do custom clothes and weapons too. Cool. You two look around for some stuff you like okay. 
I would like to talk to her for a few okay. They both looked at him and smiled, just to talk okay and to ask questions. They smiled and walked off to look at the clothes. I want you to look at something for me, but if I show it to you, you may not tell anyone of it. Okay. Alright but, if it is a weapon let me get my father he will love to see it. She left for a minute and came back with an older man with graying hair. What can I do for you? I want you to look at a sword for me. Okay. Bring it out and I will be happy to see it and appraise it. He brought from his pocket the knife and placed it on the table. The old man looked at him like he was crazy. This is a knife son. Try to pull it from the sheath. He grabbed the sheath and the handle and pulled. Nothing happened. He tried harder and still nothing. Okay is this a joke son? No, not a joke. Watch and be amazed. The girl looked at him and thought what are you a magician? Naruto grabbed both sides and pulled. The two onlookers gasped there where a knife once laid was a sword. That is an interesting sword he said. He went to grab it. Do not touch it. It was to lady grabbed it and as he raised it he jerked. He dropped it and pulled his hand back. It shocked me. I am the only one who can touch it everyone else gets shocked. That must be useful. Can you pick it up and move it for me? Naruto picked it up and moved around slowly showing him all of it. I have never seen its equal. I have seen some of the swords of the seven swordsmen and they are nothing compared to this. Where did you find it? I got it from a stranger. He handed it to me and said I was the one to own it and left. I will buy it from you. Name you price. Not for sale. Sorry but, you are welcome to look at it if you like just come get me and ask. He put the sword down I am going to go look after my ladies and find some new clothes. Okay do you mind leaving the sword here for me to look after? No problem. Naruto looked around and found his ladies, but he did not like the two he saw talking to his lady loves. Hinata was looking at clothes looking uncomfortable while Kiba stood there flirting with her. Kayubi on the other hand was looking rather pissed off as Sasuke stood there trying to touch her. I walk up to the two ladies and said, hey girls did you find what you were looking for? Naruto-kun. Naruto-sama. They said in a thank god type of voice. They walked to him and grabbed a arm each. Naruto smiled and noticed a pissed off look on both the guys' faces. What are you doing to my new girl dope? What are you doing to Hinata dead last? I was about to ask what you two were doing to my lovers. Lovers? Said the two. Yes Hinata is my lover and is mine now and Red is betrothed to me. Bullshit. Hinata is not yours. Hinata loves me and her father gave her to me ask her if you do not believe. Kiba looked at her. She nodded and said to him I am Naruto kun's Kiba from now on I belong to him and happy for it. How about you come with me Red and you can be with a prodigy instead of a loser. Why would I want to go with you? When I can be with a real man not some crybaby spoiled little boy. I will have you. I will go talk to the council and they will give me you to make me happy. She is mine Sasuke. No one can go against a betrothal not even you or the council. She will be mine dope no matter what. I am not your will I ever be your anything boy. I am my master Naruto's and only his. Sasuke moved to touch her. As his hand touched her he jerked back and looked at it. You burn me you bitch. He moved to hit her but, before it could hit Naruto was there holding his hand, if you ever look like you are going to strike her again, I will let her kill you. She could never hurt me I am much stronger than her. You are a fool if you think that Sasuke I just saved your life. Sasuke pulled his hand from Naruto's. You do not touch me though but I do not want your stupidity to rub off on me. Please leave my store and do not come back. Said the voice of the girl's father. Sasuke was turning to leave the store he saw the sword on the counter. I must have that sword give it to me. I will pay you anything for it. It is not mine to sell. It belongs to that gentleman that you just told you would steal his lover from. He pointed at Naruto. You will give me that sword dope or I will take it. I will make you a deal team if you can hold that sword for 30 seconds without dropping it is yours to have. Ha ah, thanks for the sword dope. He then walked up and grabbed the sword but no more than 10 seconds later he dropped it back on the counter. It shocked me. Teach me to hold it dope or else. No, you lost. It will never go to you. I will have the council make you give it to me and teach me to wield it with that sword I can beat him. As Sasuke was walking out he turned and said to the owner of the shop, you will never get the business of the Achiha again. He then left. Tiba looked at Naruto. Hinata is her own she can be with anyone she is not an object. She may leave if she wants but I do not think she wants to. I want to stay with Naruto-kun and I'm happy to be with him and to be his lover. Tiba looked mad. Fine. Do what you want. He then walked out of the store without a backward glance. Naruto looked at the girl. So now that the drama has walked out the door what have you ladies found? Kaiubi looked at him. What was with the red thing back there? I do not know your name so I called you red. She smiled at him. My name is Alexandra. What a beautiful name. So Alexandra find anything you like. Yes I did Naruto-sama. But I do not know if you can afford all we need and I do not want to be a burden. No burden. Due to the fact that I only ate Raymond for a while, only getting other foods when they were bad or thrown out. I have saved a lot of money up from it. So get what you like. 
okay. She showed him what she had found. I will go try it all on and show you okay. Hinata come with me we can try our stuff on and show Naruto-sama. Oh okay. She was pulled into the changing stall. Naruto sat there and waited he kept hearing squealing and laughter from the stall, and it would shake at odd times. After a while the curtain opened and out came the two most beautiful women he had ever seen. Alexandra wore a shirt of dark crimson that was loose yet tied around her chest. It matched her hair. She wore a pair of loose black anbu style pants she had on black fingerless gloves, and her arms were wrapped up from wrist to elbow. She looked amazing. Anada was in his opinion the more scantily clad of the two. She wore a fishnet shirt with a black undershirt. She had on short black pants on they went a few inches above her knee. She had on her normal jacket over it her headband was around her neck. His mouth was open in awe that so simple a change in clothing could make them look drastically different. He clapped his hands you both look amazing. I cannot begin to tell you how much so. He then noticed that both of them were showing off their mating marks, and he smiled. Alexandra smiled with a soft pink her cheeks, while Hinata was a bright red. Thank you. They both said. Bet a couple of each one of them while I pick out some stuff for me okay. They smiled and went off to get the extra pairs. Naruto walked around to the men's section and looked around. He thought about going shirtless, but that would only freak people out due to his scars. So he decided on something tight and flexible. He decided on a black shirt with fishnet arms. He looked for a pair of pants that would be flexible and had plenty of pockets. Looking over at a rack he saw them they were dark blue and looked to be made of pockets. He grabbed them and put it over the shirt in his arms. He looked through some more clothing thats when he saw them a pair of gloves made of white leather. He grabbed them and tried them on. A perfect fit. He smiled and continued to look over the clothes. Finding nothing else he liked he went to try on what he found. He came out of the stall and the two girls watched him. Hinata was blushing at the rippling muscle she could see thanks to the tight shirt. While well, Alexandra want to see more flesh. He turned around in front of a mirror and said, I like it. Why don't we go look at weapons and things to store? Okay let's. Said the girls together. They walked over to the part of the store that had scrolls for storing, weapons from shuriken and kunai to swords and shields, and other wonderful ninja gear. Naruto went through the sword section looking for something to strap his knife to him. While Hinata went through the battle glove section. She was looking for something that could strengthen her juikin style gentle fist. She found a pair of gloves that she liked made from a leather that could only be purple she liked it, but she was going to see if she can get them customized, so she grabbed them. Alexandra was looking at gloves too, but she was looking for something specific. She could not find any so he walked up to the counter and looked at the girl and her father who were still admiring the sword. Excuse me. They kept looking at the sword. Hey. They both looked at her. Dot, sorry, what can we do for you? Do you have any gloved claws? Gloved claws? Hold on. The old man walked into the back. She waited hearing bangs and pangs as things fell goddamn hamsters. Looking kind of confused about why they needed hamsters in a weapons shop she waited for him to come out. He came out with what looked like old shoe boxes. He walked to her and put the box on the counter these are over 30 years old, we never sold them cause no one could work them well enough for them to be effective. Smiling she opened the box and found a pair of what looked like regular gloves. They were red that matched her eyes. She grabbed them and put them on. They fit like they were made for her hands. She clenched her hand and they stretched. She then saw three seals between her knuckles. She channeled chakra into the seals and three claws came out of it. Nice. She smiled and said, it'll take them. How much? You can have them. Thanks. I will remember this. You have made my master's life easier. No problem. They are old and not popular with people these days. Naruto found a chain that was white he grabbed it and liked how light yet strong it was. He put it around his waist with one part going out around his shoulder. He walked around with it and hopped it felt comfortable. He decided to buy it, he figured he could hook the knife to the chain with ninja wire. He walked to the front and saw Alexandria talking to the man and girl. You find something you like? Yes, Naruto-sama. They say I can have it for free. Good. Thank you. It was no trouble. Anada walked up to the counter with a pair of purple gloves. Can I get these customized? Sure how do you want them modified? Can you put a metal at the edge of each finger that with chakra can be sharpened? Yes we can do that. It will take a few days to be finished. That is fine. How much do I owe you for all this? He looked at all the stuff on the counter and started totaling up. It took him a few minutes to calculate it all up. It will be 30,589 Ryo. Taking out his Gamachan wallet he emptied it of all but a quarter of it. That should do it. I also need a thousand shuriken and kunai. How much is it? For that as long as you bring this sword around every once in a while I will give them to you. Okay. You got yourself a deal. Smiling the old man went in the back and brought out two scrolls the blue and the other green. This one pointing at the blue one holds your shuriken and this one pointing at the green one holds your kunai. I will also give these to you for free. He held out a bag. 
Naruto took it and looked inside. In it there was scrolls, a few books and what looked to be a hamster. Okay thanks for the scrolls and the books, but, I am confused about the hamster. The old man walked over and put his hand in and grabbed the hamster. Sorry about that. The books are on ceiling to help you. Thank you I appreciate it. Just bring that sword by every few months and we have no problem. You got it. Naruto turned with a girl on each arm and was walking out when he turned back and grabbed the sword and sheathed it. Almost forgot. He walked out of the shop with the girls and started walking home. When he realized he forgot to ask something. You two go on and head home I forgot to ask something. I will catch up or meet you there okay. They both looked a question at him but nodded and kept walking. He turned around walked back to the store when he walked in, he saw a woman at the counter she had purple hair and a trench coat on. He walked up next to her and waited for the girl to stop talking to the woman next to him. He looked over to see her face and stopped breathing. She was wearing a trench coat, a fishnet shirt, was eating dango and had ample assets. He remember what Yami looked like with her fishnet shirt, trench coat and bust. He also remembered dango is my favorite food. He stared at her not seeing anything but a resemblance to the devil herself. Hey kid. What are you looking at? He looked up into her eyes and as he did so she licked her lips. Oh this is her he thought. He smiled at her just looking at one of the most beautiful women I have ever seen in my life. She smiled at him and then disappeared. He felt her appear behind him and slid a kunai against his cheek. Blood began to well from the cut and slid down his cheek. She licked his blood and said, best I have ever tasted. He smiled at her and said in a straight voice, do you suck as good as you lick? She smiled well do you like to know? I am willing to bet that one day that I will find out. I bet my life on it. She heard determination in his voice he sounded so sure. She liked it. She remembered him. He was the exploding jumper. He did not look to have a scratch on him. It must be from the Kyubis influence. He looked at the girl across the counter and smiled I forgot to ask your name and your father's. My name is Tenten Hurtamora and my dad's name is Yamba Hurtamora. Okay thank you Ten Tenten San. Don't you want to know my name? said the purple haired woman. How about I call you beautiful snake or just beautiful if you like. Enko blushed. She was so shocked she had been called hot, sexy, and many other things, but beautiful never not even once. How did this little bastard make her blush when no one but that bastard ex-teacher of hers had been able to? He smiled and walked out of the shop. Yelling back he said, I can't wait to see you later beautiful. He walked away from the shop and started to run to catch up with the girls. I will have to keep an eye on the kid. Anko thought. Naruto was running to catch up with his two new lovers when he saw someone sitting on a swing on the playground. He walked up to the person and as he grew closer he noticed it was a girl. Hello Eno. Is something the matter? She looked up at him and that is when he noticed she was crying. She had thick trails of tears going down her face. What do you want Baka? I just want to know if you are alright. You seem so sad. You can talk to me about it if you like. Why would I want to talk to a Baka like you? You who has never known real pain. He smiled at her, maybe you are right Eno but just cause I do not know pain does not mean I cannot help you. She looked at him trying to find any trickery in him. She couldn't find any so she began to talk. If I tell you promise you will never tell another no matter what. I swear. I am alone Naruto. My mother died a few months after birth and my father blames me for it. He hits me for it says if it wasn't for me his love would be alive. Naruto sat there and listened to her. He hit me today so hard I think he broke a rib. He told me today after that that he never wants to see me again. I have nowhere to go. He thought about it for a second. You can come live with me if you like. It's not big but you are welcome to it. I have very little in my life but you are welcome to some of it. She smiled at him. That is when she noticed the changes in him. He had orange tipped hair it was also more wild. She looked him over and saw the tattoos. She saw the one that looked like a necklace it was nine red interconnecting tails. One tail went to the right and touched one that was a lavender print of the leaf symbol. She then saw the ones over and under his eyes and lastly saw the nine tailed fox tattoo on his right arm. She thought that they were the most beautiful tattoos ever and that they were perfect and the one on his arm looked like it was moving. She then looked at his eyes and gasped they were a solid blue no whites and no blacks they were beautiful. I do not think that is wise we are still young and for us to share a place people will talk. You can sleep in the bed with the other girls if you like I will take the couch. Other girls? Yes. Hinata and Alexandra they are living with me now. Hinata Hinata. Like from school. And who is Alexandra? Yes that Hinata. And Alexandra is my lover in a sense. Eno was taken aback. Naruto the loud knuckle-headed idiot had a lover. Wait why is Hinata living with you? She belongs to me now and wants to be my lover too. What do you mean belongs to you and wants to be your lover too? Her father gave her to me in a trade and she loves me and wants to be with me. It is good that she gets to be with you but to share you don't you think that is wrong and for her own father to give her away for something isn't that just as wrong. 
she does not mind sharing me with Alexandra, and it is okay her father was a bastard, but it probably hurt to be traded like cattle. So they live with you? Yes and they want to. Okay I guess it is cool as long as they want to. So do you want to stay? Yes but I have nothing to give you in return everything is at my house or now it's my old house. You do not have to give me anything I just want to know you are not out here alone at night. I will come stay with you then. Okay but first we got to go get your stuff. We cannot go back to my house my father will kill me. Do not worry we will slip in from you window grab some things you need and go. Okay. Okay but let's do it fast. Alright. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X The Almanaka house and flower shop Naruto and Eno were in front of the house store. They were looking to see if anyone was there. To their displeasure her father was home but in the shop. They walked to the back of the house part of the building and jumped up to the balcony and opened the window to Eno's room. Climbing through the window they stood there and waited for sounds to see if her father was there. No sound came so Naruto walked to the open door to the hall and closed it. Okay. Find what you need and let's go. Ino went around the room slowly and quietly opening drows and grabbing what she needed. Five minutes later she said, I'm ready. As they went to the window to climb out they heard footsteps coming down the hall. Naruto pushed Ino out the window and shut it. He climbed under the bed as fast as he could and was under when the door flew open. Naruto stayed still as a pair of feet walked over and did what sounded like shut the window the feet walked to the door stopped and turned around. Naruto thought that he must be looking around for something. Then the feet went out of the room and the door shut. Holy shit that was close. Naruto climbed out from under the bed and opened the window. He jumped out and shut it again. He looked around for Ino and could not find her. He jumped up to the roof of the next house. He looked around and saw a hand waving at him from down the street. He jumped over and there she was. Are you okay Naruto? I thought you were going to get caught. No problem. Did you get all you needed? Yes. Naruto thank you so much. Really Eno no problem as long as I can help you it does no matter. She smiled at him. She then walked up and hugged him thank you. He hugged her back. You're welcome. They separated from one another. Come on let's go to your new home. Let's go then. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Naruto's apartment. Naruto opened the door to his apartment welcome home. When he walked in and looked around. There standing in front of him was Alexandra naked as the day she was born. Naruto fell head first to the floor bleeding from the nose. Ino looked at the woman who stood before her she was a beautiful red-headed woman with dark red slit eyes. She had a long tan body with long legs and a killer rack on her. Ino was wondering why such a beauty was with Naruto of all people. The only thing she could see on the woman body was a beautiful necklace and a tattoo around her throat of what appeared to be nine red interconnecting tail much like Naruto had, but she did not have the lavender leaf symbol on her right side. Why is that woman naked Naruto? I do not know. I bought her clothes today and she is not wearing any of them. Alexandra walked up to him and grabbed his head Naruto-sama I wanted to be ready for when you get home. Oh put some clothes on please. We have company and anyway Hinata will be my first. Hinata walked in and looked at Alexandra and Naruto. Him first at what Naruto kun. Ino saw Hinata and gasped she looked so different. She had on a very mature outfit on. It showed that she was more developed than most the girls their age. Her hair had orange tips like Naruto's did. Her eyes were more like slits as well. She had a tattoo on her right shoulder of a lavender leaf symbol just like Naruto. Naruto turned scarlet when it is time for my first time Hinata-chan you will be first. Hinata turned bright red and then passed out. Ino was looking at her and was kind of shocked at what she would be living with. Who is this Naruto-sama? This is Ino she will be staying with us for a while, so be nice. Yes, Naruto-sama. Can you stop calling me Naruto-sama and just call me Naruto? I can call you master if that is better. No Naruto-sama is fine I guess. Hinata woke up and looked over to see Ino standing there. Ino what are you doing here? I am going to be living with you all for a while. Okay where are you sleeping? You girls will sleep in the bedroom and I will take the couch. I do not want to be a burden on your lives I can go. No, you are no burden. Stay it is okay. I do not mind the couch and the more the merrier. Ino walked to the bedroom and put her bag down. It was a small apartment but it was a place to live. He walked over to a drawer and opened it. He started taking stuff out after doing it to three all together he said, you can each have one if you need more tell me. Okay. They all nodded. They then started to put away their stuff. Naruto smiled as he watched them put stuff away. He walked out of the room and into the bathroom. So Ino was it. Why are you here instead of at home? Ino looked at her. My father kicked me out. Okay. So I hear. Naruto found me crying and he talked to me I told him and he offered me to stay here. I said no at first he then kept talking and insisting so I said yes. 
He helped me get my stuff from my house. Sounds just like Naruto-kun. Hinata said in a dreamy voice. Naruto walked into the room okay ladies I am going to get some sleep I will see you in the morning. Good night Naruto-kun. She walked up and kissed him lightly on the lips. Night Naruto-sama. She walked up and grabbed him and kissed him hard right on the mouth. Naruto kept his lips shut. No matter how hard she tried to get in she could not. Good night Naruto. Night my loves. Good night Ino. Sweet dreams. He left the room and went to the couch. He laid his body down and looked at the ceiling he thought about all that happened today. As he drifted off he saw a light blue like Yamas eyes. He then passed out. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X The next day, Naruto woke up to a weight moving on his chest. He touched it and it was so soft, he then squeezed it and a moan came out. His eyes flew open at that and the first thing he saw was red. He turned his head to see a naked red head sleeping on him. Alexandra. Wake up. Why are you naked laying on me? Good morning Naruto-sama. How did you sleep? Why are you on me naked? I thought you could use the company and that you might be cold. Please get off and get some clothes on. Yes, Naruto-sama. As she walked back she swayed her hips. Naruto started to drool a little. Alexandra turned around and smiled you can have me just say so and I am yours master. He wiped his mouth you are beautiful and I would love to but Hinata will be my first I told you that. I know she said in a sad voice. He walked up to her and grabbed her chin. I care for you, but I promised I would do everything with her first. I love you. He stared at her. I thought you only wanted me for revenge to kill him. She was in tears looking into his eyes I have loved you for so long, but I was afraid to tell you. I do not want to be alone and you are the first thing I have ever loved. She hugged him to her tightly. He stroked her back. Tell me you will not leave me. Tell me you love me and want me please. I want you I care for you I have not known you long enough to love you, but I am sure I will one day. I swear I will never leave you. She cried into his arm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you master. I promise to be your best wife ever just don't leave me. I will never leave you. So no more tears. Okay. He kissed her on the forehead. She smiled yes master no more tears. Go get dressed. Yes master she walked back in the room and shut the door. He walked back to the couch and laid down. He closed his eyes and when he opened them again he felt something on his lips and was staring at lavender eyes. Hello Hinata. Good morning Naruto-kun. Dot. He sat up and looked around. On the table was eggs, bacon, and pancakes. Where did this come from? I went to see my father to get my things and on the way home I saw open market and bought all this with some money my father gave me. That was nice of him. We'll send him a thanks and also one more thing. He stood up grabbed her and brought her into a passionate kiss. He licked her bottom lip and nipped it as well. She opened her mouth and he slid his tongue in her mouth and explored it. He swore she tasted of sweet wine. Anata moaned. She was feeling a whole new feeling something that made her heart pound harder than ever and made her lower extremities tingle. She pushed her tongue into his mouth and explored his mouth in return. She tasted like Raymond and Mail. They stood there and kissed and held one another for several minutes. Um Naruto. Naruto turned to the voice and saw Ino staring at them. He smiled at her hi Ino. Good morning. What's up? I want to know if I can borrow some kunai and shuriken. Sure hold on. He left the room and went to the back and found the scrolls. Well there he grabbed a change of clothes. He came back to the kitchen to see them sitting down and eating. He smiled and walked up and kissed his two on the head and then walked to Ino. How many of each do you need? Just 10 kunai and 30 shuriken if you can spare them. Here. He channeled chakra into the scrolls and out came the number she needed. He handed them to her and walked to the set next to her and sat done. He pulled a plate to him and started to eat. After breakfast he got up and looked at the time it was 9, so he still had time till he had to meet the old man. He decided to just sit and wait for his appointment. As he was sitting down Ino and Hinata walked by. Naruto we are leaving to go to a training grounds. They'll see you too when you come home. Bye. He got up and kissed Hinata and ushered them out the door. He went sit back down when he heard a knock at the door. He walked over and opened it. There stood a Chunin looking at him with what only could be disgust on his face. You and your female friend are wanted before the Hokage in the council. Naruto looked back at Alexandria and said we're being called. She smiled a foxy smile. We cannot disappoint can we master. She got up from the table and walked over to him. She put her hand on his shoulder he then looked at the tune and we will meet you there. He then shut the door and locked it. Let's go. And as he finished the word go they disappeared in a swirl of fire. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X The council chamber. They were arguing when a swirl of fire came into existence in the room. Out of it stepped the boy and a beautiful red-headed woman. You rang. You rang. Said Naruto in a dull voice. 
you will show respect to this council boy or you will do time with a bicky. I am not afraid of torture. He said in a straight face. We have called you from news of your new dejutsu and also complaints from Sasuke Chiha. Said Kaharu. What about the dejutsu and what is Sasuke bitching about now? A few of the clan heads snickered. Samopoli smiled while those on the civilian side of the council gave him death glares. Alexandra laughed at what her master said. What are you laughing at woman? Said a pink-haired woman. I am laughing at what my master said about your two bit chair. The pink-haired woman looked furious. How dare you some whore talk about the great Sasuke like that? Other members of the civilian council nodded in agreement. Cutting off the talking from the pink-haired woman and the civilian council Kaharu said, show us this dejutsu. Naruto smiled, I already have. What do you mean? Said one of the civilians in the room. Watch and see. As if at his command the whole room turned pink, then blue, now it was orange. The ninja on the council tried to dispel the jinjutsu loud cries of Kai sounded from all over the chamber. Deactivate it please Naruto. Said the old Hokage. At his words the room went black then was back to normal. There sitting in a chair in front of the council with a woman on his lap was Naruto with his eye two different color eyes with slit pupils. It's from the demon. It's evil. Screamed a councilman. What demon? Hokage-sama what is he talking about? He said in an I don't understand type of voice. I hope someone is not breaking a certain law said Siratobi. The councilman sat down with a pale face. Naruto smiled. I have no idea how this happened. It could be a change from me healing from my swan dive from the monument. You should have died monster. Spat the pink-haired woman. You're right but I guess monsters just don't die Halady Haruna. The woman looked pissed. Naruto just smiled at her. What is the name of your tajutsu? Asked Kaharu. It's called the Sikigen. What else can your eyes do? He looked at the old man who was bandaged on his face and had only one arm. He did not like the even tone this man had. This man was not one to be messed with easily. Who are you if I may ask sir? I am Danzo. My eyes can see in the dark no matter if there is light or not. They can also tell someone's element affiliations. Like yours Danzo is fire, earth and wind. Danzo looked at the boy with interest. I can use him. He could help me reach my goal. I must have him and Ruder he must die. Danzo spoke up. I think you should give me the boy Siratobi. I can train him to use his eyes make him stronger than ever. No Danzo he will not be one of your root. Danzo looked pissed even with a straight face on. Then we must kill him. How do we not know he will turn those eyes against us? There were sounds of agreement from the civilian side of the room. Danzo Sama is right he is a threat. Said Lady Haruna. Silence he is no threat to us. He is a loyal ninja of Konoha. The room grew quiet at the Hokage's orders. I agree with Hokage Sama. Said Hiashi Hayuga to the shock of the entire council. The boy is no threat to us. The other clan heads agreed then a vote. All those who wish for the boy to die raise your hand about 10 people raised their hand including Danzo all those against 11 hands raised he lives. Some of the council looked pissed but thought they would get their revenge with what happened next. Now on to the Ichiha's complaints. Said Kaharu. Sasuke Ichiha says that that woman denied him her body due to the fact that she is betrothed to him. Said the Haruna well pointed him. He may not have her. She is mine. She is my betrothed and no one not even the council can null a betrothal unless made in the village said a determined Naruto. Okajama. Said an annoyed Haruna she is the first woman he has ever been interested in, we must give her to him to bring back the mighty Ichiha clan. What about what she thinks? Said Siratobi. The whole council looked at the woman. You could be the first wife of the Ichihas you would have power, money and rights that most would dream. If you stay with him pointing at Naruto you have nothing and be nothing, said the Haruna with the support of the civilian council. She is probably right you know Alexandra said Naruto. I have nothing but what I can make and work for you would have a better and easier life with Sasuke he said with a smile. I do not care. I want you my master. My one and only love no one can replace that not money, power, or rights. You are my everything Naruto-sama. If they forced me to go I would kill the Ichiha when he touched me. Shocked at what this woman had given up. It is decided. She stays with Naruto. But Hokage-sama he know but they are to be together. Fine but the sword he wields must go to Sasuke. He does not deserve it only Sasuke should be given it. I already made a deal with Sasuke that if he could hold it for 30 seconds it was his. He dropped it after 5. Only I can wield it anyways no one, but me can unsheathe it, and if it happens to be unsheathed, no one can hold it with okay getting shocked. You will teach him to use the sword or else. I cannot teach him. There is no teaching you can either hold it and use it or not. Show us the sword. Said the Hokage. Okay. He pulled out his little knife and grabbed both ends. Out of nowhere a sword appeared. Danzo was looking at it as if it was a key to the heavens. I must have it he thought. If you can hold it for 30 seconds then it is yours, but you get only one chance. Every one of the council civilians came and tried and was zapped and dropped it within 5 seconds. 
The Hokage walked up and looked at the sortie then picked it up. Nothing happened. Naruto smiled 30 seconds passed and Naruto laughed, it is yours to do with as you see fit Hokage give it away or keep it it's up to you. Okage-sama give it to Sasuke deserves it not that things. Said a small man in the back. The Hokage smiled and handed it back to Naruto. It is yours Naruto but I must say it is beautiful. Thank you, Hokage-sama. He bowed. If that is all may I leave please. Yes you may Naruto, but if you could please go wait in my office for a little bit, we have things to discusses. Hi Hokage-sama. He and the woman bowed and left. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Minutes later in the office of the Hokage Naruto sat in the Hokage's chair going side to side. He looked over at his company in the room and smiled at her. God he takes too long. Alexandra smiled. Patience Naruto-sama he has lots to deal with for the good of this village. Naruto frowned but nodded you're right. I will try to stay calm. At that moment the door opened to the room and in stepped the old Hokage. He looked around to see Naruto sitting in his chair and the woman Alexandra lying on the couch. He smiled at Naruto's antics. Okay Naruto we got to talk about your team and also about Alexandra. Naruto got up and walked to the other side of the desk and sat in the chair across from the Hokage. Alexandra stood from the couch and sat right next to him. The old man sat in his chair and looked at the two. Alexandra had Naruto's hand in hers. Alexandra. I know what you are. I need to know what you are going to do now. Whatever my master bid me. So you are under Naruto's control. Yes if he wanted to he could force me to do anything he wanted, but he doesn't. He gives me free will that is why he is my master and the man I love. I do not use my control on her unless I have to. She is important to me and I do not wish to force anything from her. Do you swear you have no ill will against this village? Oh I have ill will if my master would let me I would lay waste to your village killing every man and woman in it to lay at his feet for the pain it has caused him. He does not want that so I go by what my master wishes. You have no worry of me unless he changes his mind, then nothing will stop me. So as long as Naruto does not will it you do not do something. Yep that right. She said squeezing Naruto's hand tight and smiling at him. He smiled back his foxy grin. Do you have ninja skills? Yes I do. I am not as strong as I once was though. I left seven tails in Naruto-sama and only have two now. How strong would that make you then? I would say about your level and your prime maybe a little weaker. The old man was shocked with only two tails she was as strong as him in his prime. He then looked at Naruto he has seven tails. He will indeed be powerful and strong. I am going to make you a jounin, but you are going to be Naruto's bodyguard, so where he goes you go. Alexandra looked happy. So I get to be with him always. She was smiling and looked to be jumping in her seat. Now back to the team business. There was a knock on the door. Come in. In walked Kakashi, Sasuke and Sakura. Okajsama you wish to see me and my team. Sasuke looked over at Naruto, and he did not look happy. Yes Kakashi. I have a few questions for you and your team. He said in a straight and serious face. Hi Hokajsama. My team is at your disposal. Sakura Haruna. What have you been taught by your sensei? Sakura thought about it for a minute. He has taught us teamwork. The Hokage nodded. Then he looked over at Sasuke. Sasuke Cha. What have you been taught by your sensei? Sasuke looked over to Kakashi I ask you what you learned. Do not look at your sensei. We learned teamwork. He said in a low tone. Is that all you learned from him? Is there nothing else? Yes that is all. Teamwork Kakashi that is all you have taught these two. I know the Ichiha is lying you have been training him privately. Why are you training him more than the other two? I think of the three he is the most important and has the most potential. The other two should stop now. How would you know if we have talent? You have taught us nothing. In a month's time you taught us teamwork and in that month you became a hypocrite by abandoning us. Kakashi looked over at Naruto. The boy had a point, but still he owed it to Abito to make sure his kin was strong. Kakashi you are relieved as the sensei of Team 7 and are not to teach the Ichiha anymore. Okajama I still wish to teach the boy. I must. I want him to teach me he is the best there is and I want him to teach me. Said an extremely pissed off Sasuke. You have failed as a teacher Kakashi. Your sensei would be ashamed of you and so would your teammates. I plan to reform the teams and appoint a new sensei for the new Team 7. You are dismissed Kakashi Haddock. Kakashi looked like he wanted to argue some more, but he turned and left the office without another word. The Hokage pressed a button on his desk. A minute later a secretary came and yes Hokage-sama. Call the other two teams new rookie teams to my office and send for Anko. Yes, Hokage-sama. She walked out of the office and shut the door. There was a silence in the room for over a half hour. Naruto sat and talked to Alexandra, the Hokage was doing paperwork, Sasuke was brooding, and Sakura like always was asking Sasuke out on date and professing her love to him. When the door opened and in came the other rookie teams. 
You wanted to see us Hokage-sama. Said Asuma. Yes but, we have to wait for the new team 7 sensei. The other senseis looked at the Hokage in shock. What do you mean new sensei? What happened to Kakashi? Asked a confused Kuranai. He has been removed as a sensei due to his own incompetence. Why are we here if they are just getting a new sensei? Asked Asuma. You will find out when she gets here. They stood there and waited a minute when a swirl of leaves came out of the floor and in came a purple-haired woman. Naruto smiled, hey beautiful. Anko looked over to him and scowled with a slight blush on her cheeks. Alexandra and Hinata did not look happy at all. They were staring at Anko with killing looks. You wanted me Hokage-sama. She said in a confused voice looking around seeing nine kids with Kurinai and Asuma. She looked at Kurinai and looked a question at her. Kurinai just shrugged and smiled at her closest friend. Yes I am giving you a new mission. He said to her in a stern voice. Hi I am ready Hokage-sama. You are going to be the new sensei of Team 7. Anko was confused. Who would let her teach children? The council would never let this go they still think I am a traitor. Who would let me teach their children? Okajama I will accept. Who would let me teach their children sir? I would love her to be my sensei. Said Naruto with what seemed to be a true smile. Anko looked at him and shuddered at the look he gave her, but she felt good that someone would like themselves to be taught by her. Since the new sensei is here we can talk about the new team setups. To his understanding people were surprised. Okaj what do you mean by new team setup? I am changing the teams up. The Inoshika Cho team is amazing yes but if someone fought the original team up then they might have come up with a way to defeat them. So it is time to switch it up a little and try some new things. The Hayuga, Aburam and Inuzuka are a well-known combination for Konoha, so someone most likely has found a way to neutralize it. The two Jounin senseis were silent for a few minutes thinking. That sounds like a good idea this will ensure the variety in the teams to make it harder to calculate them. Said Asuma. He looked disappointed that his team was going to change. He was learning to like them and even cared for them. Kurinai looked at her team. She liked them a lot and did not want to part with them, but she knew the Hokage was right. If switching them up with a new team would increase their chances of survival even by a slime margin, then it was worth it. The Hokage looked over at the teams and the senseis nodded in understanding. Okay then. Naruto you are going to stay on Team 7 with Anko. Naruto smiled at Anko with a knowing smile. Hinata you will be moved to Team 7 as well and Sasuke will take your place. Hinata was happy and smiled that she would be on her love's team, but frowned right after. She looked at her sensei with apologetic look in her eyes. Kurinai just smiled happy that her student got to be with her love. She then looked over at her teammates and had the same look. Shino nodded to her without an emotion on his face, while Kibo looked mad. Ino will be transferred to Team 7 and Sakura will take her place. Ino's heart was fluttering and she had no idea why. She looked back at her team and smiled. They smiled right back at her. So the teams are as follows. He looked over at Kurinai Kurinai will be the sensei for Team 10 with Sasuke, Shino, and Kiba. He looked at the three and then back at their sensei, and she nodded. He looked over at Asuma Asuma will be sensei of Team 8 with Shikamaru, Choji, and Sakura. Asuma nodded. He then looked at Anko, you will be the sensei of Team 7 with Ino, Hinata, Naruto, and Alexandra here will be your backup. Why does that worthless team of weaklings get senseis? I deserve to have her for my private sensei. Because I want them too she is not a sensei she is Naruto's guard, but she happens to teach them something that is okay too. He said smiling. Why does he get a private guard when I the last Ichiha do not? Said Sasuke in an outraged tone. Do you want a guard that will be with you all the time? I can give you one if you want it so bad. I want her as my guard and no one else. Sorry she is taken, but I am sure the old man can give you a beautiful guy to grope and touch if you like. Naruto said with a matter-of-fact voice. Sasuke looked ready to jump Naruto. Naruto just smiled as there were a few smiles in the room and some looked to be holding back laughter. Alexandra though was laughing loudly. Sakura was giving her the death glare trying to. Do not laugh at Sasuke he is better than the retard you have to guard. The room's temperature dropped. What did you say about my master? It was said in the most evil and disturbing way possible. Sakura looked confused what? Did you just call him master? Yes that is what he is my master. If you ever say something bad about him again I will kill you, especially if you say that worthless nothing of an Ichiha is better than my master. Naruto chuckled calm down. Please Alexandra I do not care what some fangirl thinks of me. Master I will not have her think you are worse than that worthless bastard. She snarled. He walked up and grabbed her chin. It is okay let her think what she wants. She was about to argue when he leaned down and kissed her. Her face changed to one of happiness for the affection she was getting. He pulled away from her and she followed to try to get more he put his hand and stroked her cheek maybe later. Yes my master. Sakura had a scared and confused look on her face. How could Naruto have this girl so entrapped in him that she called him master? He must be controlling her or something. 
Alexandra looked at Sakura and said in an even tone, thank my master he just saved you. Sakura was about to say something when Shikamaru grabbed her arm, just do not tempt it. She looks like she means business. Troublesome woman. If we're done with these unneeded interruptions then we can continue. He looked at Naruto, Sasuke and then Sakura who said nothing. You are to get acquainted with your new team and teammates, then tomorrow you will start your missions together. Until then you are dismissed. Hi. Said everyone in the room. They all walked out of the office. When they reached outside Anko turned around and looked at her team. Meet me at training ground 44 within a half hour or else we are having dodging practice. She said with a creepy smile. She then turned around and disappeared. Naruto grabbed onto Ino and Hinata and held them close. Hinata and Ino turned red. He then touched Alexandra's hand and said in an amused voice do it. Yes master. They all disappeared into a swirl of flames. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Training ground 44 Anko sat in a tree and waited for her team. She thought about her team her first real team. She was happy about having it but not so happy about whom it was. That Naruto really was strange to her he was confusing and made her feel like she had not in a long time. He had a bodyguard who called him master and the Hinata girl seemed to like him. She was still thinking when a flash of fire appeared in the clearing in front of the fence into the forest. What the hell was that Naruto? Screamed Ino who was dizzy and having a hard time standing straight. It was a shushin of a different kind. He said nonchalantly. Ino looked pissed while Hinata was stumbling around. Do not do that again without telling me okay. Naruto smiled and bowed to Ino. Sorry, Ino-chan. Ino blushed. Did he call me Ino-chan? Why do I care he is only a nice boy he is nothing but a normal boy. I love Sasuke and I do not care about Naruto. Why am I blushing though? Naruto looked around for his new sensei. He spotted her in a tree. He walked up and jumped up and walked to her. Before he could get closer she swiped her leg out and he tripped. He fell through the branches of the tree and hit the ground right on his butt. Damn it. He smiled up to her. Don't try that again blondie or you are going to be much more holy. I want you four to gather around me and tell me about yourselves. Names, favorite colors I don't care just tell me about you. When you are done with that tell me what you want to learn from this and what you already are good at in specialties. She looked at the group and pointed at Hinata first. You pale eyes go first. Hinata looked around and then started to talk. My name is Hinata Hayuga. My favorite color is lavender. I love my boyfriend and cannot wait to marry him. She looked at Naruto who was smiling at her and blushed. I live with Ino, Alexandra and him in his apartment. I love to dance and can sing okay. I hate people who judge people for what they cannot help but happened and those who view by someone's status. I hope to one day stop the use of the cage bird seal and set the branch family free. I want to learn more ninjutsu to change the Juikan style to better suit me and increase my low chakra reserves. Dot my specialties are my family's tojutsu style, medical tasks and chakra control. She smiled and did not continue, but start. Now you willow. Everyone looked around and wondered who she was talking to. You. She pointed at Ino. Ino looked upset. Why am I willow? Cause you look like as a willow tree. Still looking mad Ino started her little speech. Im Ino Yamanaka. My favorite color is purple. I live with Naruto and the other two like Hinata said. I love flowers they are me favorite pastime. At this Naruto's eyes opened wide when he remembered something. Flashback, your second clue is flowers are my favorite pastimes. Then flashback, Naruto stared at her. He had already taken in one of his lovers and not even realized it. He felt stupid for not seeing it before. Yami had the same eyes as her and had the purple skirt like Ino had on now. I thought I had loved this guy but I'm not sure anymore. I hate people who hurt others for something they could not help or stop from happening. I wish to learn more interrogation techniques and tojutsu. My strengths are interrogation, medical herbs and chakra control. Enko nodded at her. A girl after my own heart. Now your turn big red. Alexandra looked at her my name is Alexandra. I like. Dot. But no last name. Said Enko in a sly voice. No I do not but if I gave myself one it would be Uzumaki. She smiled and looked at Naruto. My favorite color is red. I love my master. I would do anything for him no matter what he asked. I hate those who do anything to hurt, make fun of, or say bad things about my master. I wish to learn more about my master. I am good at many things. Anko looked at her like she was a little crazy, but who was she to bitch she was crazy. Okay whiskers your turn. Okay I'll go after you beauty sensei. He said radiating a full smile. She looked at him agitated fine. My name is Anko Midarashi. My favorite color is black. I like blood and fighting. I hate snake bastards, traitors, and those who do not look at someone's inside. I wish to learn how to be a sensei. My strengths are interrogation, poisons, and stealth. She smiled and looked at Naruto. 
Happy whiskers. Now go. Naruto smiled and nodded. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. My favorite color is orange. I like my girls Hinata and Alexandra. I like my new team and sensei also Ino-chan. At this all the girls turned red some darker than others. I dislike people who are given everything and think they deserve it, people who judge and hurt people without knowing anything about them, and most of all I hate turtles. At that everyone around looked at him. Then out of nowhere there was two thumps as something hit the ground, then there was laughter. Alexandra and Anko were on the ground laughing and crying. Naruto looked at them and frowned. Sorry master, but it's so cute and funny. He looked over at Hinata and Ino to see them both laughing too. After a few minutes the laughing subsided. I wish to have people close to me and to learn anything I can to protect my precious people. I am strong in chakra reserves, in fighting spirit, and in the willingness to learn. Anko nodded. We have lots of work to do but, as long as you do your best and never give up you can and will succeed. I want you to meet me here tomorrow for our mission and then training. Dismissed. It had been a month since the new teams had been put together, and the new team 7 was doing much better than the rest. They got missions done in half the time than most of the other teams, and had done twice as many as any team had. They had done everything from cleaning up a field for children to play into the most tedious task of catching Tora the cat, which they had done in a record time, for the fire daimyo's wife. Their training and improvement were astounding. They were considered the best genin team since the Sanin, and were said to be the team to see go through the Chunin exams on their first try. Enko looked out over her training team and smiled. She felt like she had done something truly amazing in her life. She had trained them into the ground making them do so much training that at the end of the day, that they were lucky to move each day after it. She had them each learning or perfecting something every day. They were given a general workouts every day to strengthen their reserves, strength, chakra control, and precision. They did push-ups, sit-ups, chin-ups, and backflips to strengthen muscles. Water walking, tree climbing, and kunai balancing to up their reserves and help with chakra control. Precision in Anko's opinion was her favorite. She would throw kunai at them for them to dodge and them to hit small things off trees. If they missed they did laps, on their hands, on the lake, while Anko threw poison kunais at them. Anada was being taught water and lightning based ninjutsu, after Naruto had said that those were her elemental affinities. She was learning to combine her ninjutsu into deadly combinations to help neutralize and even kill hordes of enemies. She was also changing her Juikan style to be more fluid with less solid hits than it already had. She was incorporating her style and Anko's style of striking snake to form a style she named Streaming Lily. She still used Juikan a lot, but you knew when she was serious when she slipped on her point gloves as Naruto called them for the point they made on her fingers and the pain they caused. Naruto had ended up her test dummy and permanent sparing partner due to his healing factor. She would beat the crap out of him, then use healing jutsus to bring him back quicker and do it again. So she got to practice two things at once fighting and healing. Perfecting both and learning new things all at the same time. Ino was being taught earth and fire based jutsu from Anko and Alexandra. She learned ninjutsu for more of a defensive and supporting work. She was learning to be the support and interrogator of the team. Anko was teaching her how to use poison, language and torture to interrogate someone if by some unknown reason her mind walking jutsu did not work. Anko said that she would make Ino into the greatest interrogator in the history of Konoha. She was getting Ibiki to help with her training as well. Anko even went so far as to sneak into her old house and stealing jutsu scrolls from her father for her to copy. She was learning to fight from Anko. She seemed to be made for the striking snake fighting style. She had the thin body and the flexibility to make the style truly effective. Her and Anko would spar and do katas together and stop to correct their formation. Anko had given her twin sickles for her to learn to incorporate into the style. Ino called them her fangs and loved to pull them out to twirl. Naruto's training by far had been the most unbelievable and biggest payoff. He had an unheard of rate of change. He learned faster than anyone she knew, he got stronger with less training, and he fought like an animal. He had found out that he was an abnormally high wind affinity and a secondary water one. He was learning the two different types of ninjutsu from Anko and Alexandra. He was learning wind jutsu and wind manipulation from Alexandra and water from Anko. He had even started on combining the two to make ice. Anko had taught him the basics of kinjutsu but after had told him to go off and figure out his own style. He had been working on it and had even come up with a few moves he called his style fox's claw. It was an attack-based kinjutsu with little to no defense and it was a style of speed over strength. Alexandra was teaching her personal tojutsu style shadow paw to Naruto. This style taught strength over speed. It was more about connecting a punch more than where it connected. This style was like the Iron Fist style more about hurting the body with strong hits than cause precise damage like the Juikin. All in all the training and hard work of her three students had been absolutely amazing. She felt happier with these three than she had felt since her family's death. They made her laugh, feel happy and strangely at home. 
Banko did still feel weird around Naruto but it was not as bad as it was. She still blushed when he called her beautiful and still felt the flutter of her heart when he smiled. She was not sure what the feeling was, but she knew that it could not be bad because Naruto was a good guy. Okay Arantz it's time to pack it in. She said in her usual gruff tone. The three dropped to the ground and took a deep breath. Their sensei had made them jump through hoops today literally. They were completely worn out and so tired that sleep would be all to eyes for them to reach. Good work today team. You know where to meet me tomorrow bright and early. Bye. She then disappeared into a swirl of leaves. She always does that. Run us till we almost die then leave us to ourselves. Said Ino. Yes she does, but that is why we are the best there is. She has made us strong. Said Hinata. You are right, but does she have to leave us half dead? Naruto said. The three laughed as they got up. Alexandra walked up to them and grabbed Naruto. Are you ready to go master? She said slyly. Yeah I want to walk today it is a nice day and since it is so nice we can go shopping. Sound good ladies. The three girls nodded and started walking off toward the village with Naruto right there with them. As they walked, talking amongst themselves, through the village Naruto saw someone make a sudden movement off to the side of them. He reached out and grabbed the kunai out of the air as it was about to hit Ino. Ino's eyes grew wide. She looked at the kunai in Naruto's hand and over to the area it was thrown from. Sitting there on a chair staring at them was her father. I thought you were just a killer but now you are a slut who hangs out with other killers. Ino started to shake as she looked at her father. Naruto saw this and turned to the man and said in a serious tone, she is no killer and slut she is the farthest thing from. Why would she not be? She lives with you murderer and your other two whores and you are learning from the snake whore so of course she is one. Ino was confused Naruto was no murderer she thought. Why do you care where I live, who it is with and who teaches me? You kick me out with nothing but the clothes on my back. The man looked pissed do not backtalk me girl I am still your father. I do not want our family name soiled by you hanging with this demon. Ino looked confused again, a father does not leave their child alone with nowhere to live or go with nothing but the clothes they are wearing. I do not call Naruto-kun that he is so nice and sweet. I have known more happiness with him in a month than with you in 12 years. Naruto smiled at her she called me Naruto-kun, I wonder if she realizes it. Her father frowned and started walking toward her. You are going to come back with me and stop being a ninja. You will just embarrass the family name. No. I will never go with you. I am a ninja now and am an adult. I can do what I want and what I want is to stay with Naruto-kun and be a ninja. You do not have a choice you are coming with me. He reached out to grab her. Intense pain shoots up his arm and he pulled away from her. He looked at his hand to see a large X on his hand. Naruto held up the kunai that the man had thrown and showed him that there was blood on it. If she says no that means no. Every time you touch her without her permission you get a nice scar and trust me that will scar. He said smiling. The man now looked down at the cuts and said, I will get her back demon one way or another. Naruto looked at the man with a serious face and Nachi san, if by some miracle you do get her I will just go and get her back and if you hurt her nothing on this planet will stop me from killing you in the most horrible way possible. Inachi looked at the boy then turned and walked away. Naruto smiled and looked at Ino and said in a calm voice, you can stay with us as long as you want Ino-chan. At those words she burst into tears and hugged him thank you Naruto-kun. Thank you so much. He stroked her blonde locks murmured welcomes. She pulled away from him and blushed sorry Naruto-kun. It's okay Ino-chan. He called me Ino-chan. What does that mean? She was blushing a little harder. They continued their walking and stopped from time to time to pick a few things out from stores that tolerated and even like Naruto. After about an hour they walked back to Naruto's apartment and started making dinner. After a well-made dinner they decided to hit the hay. Naruto walked over to both Hinata and Alexandra and kissed them goodnight. After that he waved goodnight to Ino and lay on the couch to think. The girls walked into the room and shut the door. They each went to a drawer and started to change into their night clothes. Alexandra just took off her clothes except for her panties and laid on the bed she liked to sleep mostly in the buff. Hinata was down to her underwear and a bra walked to the closet and put on one of Naruto's shirts. It was a tight fit around the chest but loose around her legs. Ino put on a pair of short shorts and a training bra to sleep in and got in the bed. Ino looked up at the ceiling and after a few minutes started to talk. I need to tell you both something. She said a little nervous. Oh head willow were all ears. Ino sat up and gave Alexandra a death glare, then laid back down. I think I love Naruto. We know. Said Hinata in a matter-of-fact voice. Ino sat up again and looked at the two. You know. Why are you not angry or hate me? Because we both knew going into it that we would have to share him with five others. Alexandra said. Five others? Ino said shocked. Yes he will have six girls that will love him and he will love. They will be his mates. We thought you were one for a while now. Said Hinata. So I will be his mate. Is that like a wife or something? Yes but better by about a thousand percent. Alexandra said. 
How is this done and what will happen to me? She said kind of worried. You would have to bite him on the neck and him bite you. It will leave a tattoo on it. Like this she pulled her collar down and showed Eno a lavender leaf symbol on her neck and Alexandra showed her the tails on her neck. You will give him your symbol and you get that same symbol. What will happen differs for each of us. Me I got orange tips, the tattoo, and my eyes became more slits. Said Hanada. So I get stronger and I get some sort of physical trait from him. Yes but, you should know that this is forever. You will be his all your life and he will be yours, but you will have to share. So he will love me too. We do not know. You need to talk to him to even see if you are one of them. What if he does not want me? He might kick me out. I don't know what I will do. He is not like that and you know it. Just go out there and one more thing. Tell him I said it was okay for you to sleep there. So go. Hinata grabbed her and pushed her out the door. Ino stumbled and looked back at Hinata. Go and try not to hit anything. Ino walked through the room trying to avoid running into anything. She made it to the couch with little problem. She looked down at the mass sleeping there and got on her knees. Naruto-kun can I talk to you? As she said it she reached her hand out and touched him. There was no answer so she stood up. She then slipped and fell onto Naruto. Naruto awoke to a sudden feeling on his chest. He opened his eyes and saw the silhouette of a woman. Alexandra go back into the other room. Ino blushed at those words and was trying to get up but slipped again. Naruto-kun it's me Ino I kind of fell on you. Naruto sat up and pulled Ino with him. He sat her down next to him and turned on the lamp next to the couch. What's up Ino-chan? Ino looked at him nervously, I need to tell you something Naruto-kun. Okay Ino-chan go ahead I'm all ears. Naruto-kun I I I love you. She said and covered her face. Naruto smiled at her then reached up and pulled her hands from her face. She looked at him with tears in her eyes. I want to be with you Naruto-kun. I want to be your mate too. She flung her arms out and hugged his stomach area. Naruto looked a little stunned that she knew about the mating, but figured that Hinata and Alexandra had told her about it. Do you really want to be my mate? Yes please. I don't want to be without you. You make me happier than anyone in the world. Please make me one of your mates. If that is what you want I will make you mine, but I have to tell you a few things first. He then proceeded to tell her of have the Kaiubi trapped in him and that Alexandra was the Kaiubi, that she would have to share him with others. He then looked at her with a serious face. Do you still want to be with me to be my mate? More than I did before I want you as mine. I do not care. I will do anything you want. He smiled at her and nodded. At that Eno started to jump up and down, then she tackled him and said thank you. Thank you. Thank you master. At the word master Naruto grabbed her shoulders, you do not have to call me that. Alexandra does why can't I? He stared her in the eyes and said Alexandra does it in my opinion as a penance for what she believes is the pain she caused me. She does it to show me that even though she is far more powerful than me that she will bow to my every whim just to show the man she loves that she is sorry for the pain she caused him. I think I understand. So other than the tattoo and so physical and chakra changes what can I expect from this mating? Well you will have internal youth and never have to worry about any sickness but you can still die you're just harder to kill. You will gain a link with me that will tell me where you are at all times. You will have the urge to be near me whenever you can. Those not sound bad to me. She said. This is forever Eno. You will be mine and me yours. Okay I understand so let's do it. Naruto smiled and laughed at her gun ho attitude. Do you want to bite me first or I bite you? It'll go first if it is okay with you. He turned his neck to the side and said leave me something pretty. She leaned into him and grabbed the back of his neck. She pulled him in close and breathed in smelling Raymond and male. She bent down and bite. Naruto felt the rush overtake him. The feel of Eno push into him as she bite down on his neck. He turned his head and bite left side starting to channel chakra into it. Eno moaned. She had never felt anything like this in her life. It felt like concentrated chakra and heat. It made her feel turned on. She could feel the dampness between her legs grow. When it became unbearable she pulled and screamed Naruto-kun as she climaxed. Naruto pulled back from her neck and smiled. He licked his lips and looked at his new mate. She had changed more than Hinata or Alexandra had. She had slit eyes, tips that were both purple and orange, her canine teeth had grown sharper and more pronounced, and her eyes became a solid blue like his. Ino smiled at him and said my love. My mate. She then kissed him hard grabbing the back of his neck and pulling him into her. He was thinking for a second she kisses like Yami. He kissed her back and Ino moaned. She went for his shirt, but he stopped her. She looked at him with lust in her eyes she want him badly. Why not? I want you. She then looked down and it seems you want me too. He looked down and noticed the tent he was sporting. I am sorry I would love to, but Hinata will be my first. Okay. She looked disappointed but nodded she got off him. She walked into the bathroom and turned on the light. Naruto looked over after a minute and saw her staring at something on the wall. He got up and walked over and peered in to see her staring at herself. 
He put his arms around her and whispered to her, you look amazingly beautiful. She looked more closely at herself. He was right she was even more beautiful. The tips made her blonde hair stand out, her eyes were like his solid blue, but a lighter blue than his, and her teeth were longer and sharper. She looked over at and noticed a flower where Naruto had bitten her. She stared at the flower it was a purple snapdragon with blue lining. She then looked at Naruto and saw the same thing on his neck, but one of the tails from the tattoo that went around his neck stretched out and touched the flower, and circling the tail was a vine. They walked back into the living room and sat down. Ino looked at Naruto can I stay out here with you tonight? I do not think it is okay Hinata is to be my first in all things. Hinata said I could sleep with you tonight. Did she really? I guess if she said it was okay then you can. Ino smiled and hugged him. Naruto laid down and Ino laid next to hugging him to her. I love you Naruto. Good night Ino chan. Good night Naruto kun. They kissed and slowly drifted off to sleep. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X The next morning out front of the Hokage Tower the gang sat waiting for their crazy sensei. Ino was looking over at her changes still admiring them. What happened to Willow? Everyone looked over to see Anko standing by the steps to the Hokages. She got a matey over. Said Naruto smiling. Anko stared at him confused. Matey over. Yes Ino is one of my lovers now. Anko looked over at Ino with slightly hard eyes. Naruto smiled if he didn't know better he would say she looked jealous. He decided to tease her a little. You could join them sensei you would be more than welcome. Anko looked over at him and blushed. Let's go and get our missions for the day so we can train. She turned and started to walk up the stairs. They reached the Hokage's office and knocked. Enter. Said a young familiar voice. They entered the room to see the Hokage sitting at his desk with their old sensei Aruka sitting next to him. What can I do for Team 7 today? We came to get our mission Hokage-sama. Said Anko as she bowed. Hopefully something more fun old man I am tired of the cat in painting houses. We need something more challenging. Naruto show some respect to the Hokage. Said Aruka. The Hokage laughed okay. How about a C ranked out of the village sound good? Yes please. I could use it. Okajama they are not ready for a C rank yet they are fresh from the academy. Aruka san my team is more than ready for a C ranked mission. They are not the same kids you taught in the academy. Anko stared at the man as she said it. Aruka looked her not believing that these three once considered the three weakest in the class could have changed that much. He stared at the three each in turn and noticed small changes but nothing that could show that they were changed other than appearance. Aruka I believe Anko is right. They train hard and do more mission than even some of the season Chunin do. Aruka nodded to the leader of the village. Your mission is to escort this man back to Wave. Tazuna san you can come in now. A man entered the room with a bottle in one hand and a bat in the other. He was about as tall if not a little taller than Anko. He had a beer belly that made it look like he was smuggling a keg in his shirt. He had grey hairy and a goatee. He was wearing a straw hat and a small pair of spectacles on the bridge of his nose. These runts are going to protect me. They look like they could not protect a mouse from a cat. That boy there looks like he could not win a fight with his shadow. Azuna blinked and when he looked back the red head that was standing behind the blonde boy had disappeared. He felt something around his neck. He turned to see that the red head was standing behind him and had her hands around his throat. My master is very strong. Do not insult him again or I might have to hurt you. Trust me. Alexandra stop and come here. As if by command the redhead, now known as Alexandra, let go of Tizuna and walked back to the blonde and kneeled before him. He reached out and touched her cheek. No threatening the client okay. Sorry, master. He kissed her forehead and helped her up. By now Tizuna felt kind of weird about the show. Do they practice slavery in Kanoha? Shaking the thought from his mind he turned back to the leader of this village. We accept the mission. Anko said. But you are dismissed, but Naruto can you stay behind for a few minutes I would like to talk to you in private. Sure old man. Anko turned to the team we will meet at the north gate in an hour and a half. They all nodded before leaving the room. When they were all out the Hokage turned to Aruka and said, go take a break Aruka come back in a half an hour and we will continue. Hi hokage Zama. Aruka turned and walked out the room. So Naruto I noticed the change in Ino. What happened to her? She decided she wants to be with me. So I gave her a gift. Okay. What did her father say to that? He said nothing. He kicked her out. She is living with me and the girls has been for over a month. Well her father is petitioned to marry her off to the Achea. I cannot let that happen. She is with me now and she is her own person. When her father kicked her out he gave up the right to give her to anyone and I will fight anyone I have to keep her. I understand. I denied it and told him the same. He was very angry. Said the Hokage with a snicker. Thank you Ajsan. How is Yaur? It'll get you now old man. Said a boy who burst in with a shuriken in his hand. The Hokage smiled. 
The boy went to throw the shuriken when he tripped. Naruto looked at the boy with his mouth agape. Hey you. You tripped me. No, you tripped on that long scarf. You should wear it or at least wrap it tighter. He grabbed his scarf and wrapped it tighter. I wear it the way my mother put it on me. Don't tell me what to do. It is great that she put it on you like that, but you need to secure it or you could get it caught. As he said this he walked up and kneeled in front of the boy. He reached out and adjusted the scarf so it wrapped around his neck and then around his waist. There it should help okay. The boy looked up at him who are you? Naruto Uzumaki. Nice to meet you. He stuck his hand out and shook the younger boy's hand. My name is Konohimaru. The boy looked kind of confused. Why are you being nice to me is it cause I am the Hokage's grandson? Naruto looked back at the old man Hesu's your grandson. Yes. He is my daughter's son. He said sadly. Naruto looked at the little boy and smiled. The kid had lost his parents he knew that. Is that all you needed old man? Yes you can go. Come on Konohimaru. They walked out of the room. When they made it out of the tower he turned to the little boy how about I train you? Really? He said with a smile. Yeah. I want to ask you some questions. Okay. How many friends do you have? None. Do you have anyone you love someone you want to protect? Other than the old man and the memories I have of my parents no. Okay for me to train you I want you to do three things okay. Anything. I want you to make three friends and to work on this with them. Naruto handed him a scroll. Konohimaru opened it and he smiled. You need to have it done when I get back okay. If you do that I will train all three of them too. Okay boss will do. The boy then ran off towards the ninja academy cackling. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Two hours later, the three girls and Naruto sat at the gate and waited. They're half an hour late. Where are they? We're right here. Found the bastard at a bar drinking his weight in sake. Anko was walking up dragging the client behind her. She reached them and looked them over. Ready to go. As ready as we will ever be. Let's go then. Team formation diamond. Naruto you in the center, Hinata in the back, Alexandra left, Ina right, and I will be in the front. Move out. Thanks for watching.